I'll do it like this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to beautiful downtown Grand Forks, the proud home of the University of North Dakota. This is the time and place for the Grand Forks Growth Fund, the Jobs and Development Board. Uh, we'll begin with roll call, please. Ray Weigel. Here. Lusky. Here. Weather. Here. Lusky. Here. Mommy. Here. 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 Hey, quiet down. <laughs> please. Uh, please be nice. Just yell at ease, please. Okay, um, Chairman Weber, in front of you is uh, the the uh, form communications uh, term, um, request of termination of the, uh, early. Um, this is uh, for the Grand Forks Herald. Um, as we know, um, we purchased the Grand Forks Herald building back in 2019. And over that time period, that lease has been uh, reduced in square footage and to where we are today. The lease ends um, next year, May, and uh, Mr. Wenzel is here on behalf of Forum Communications and Grand Forks Herald. I think their intent was to uh, likely terminate the lease at its ending uh, next May and to move up, move into uh, an, more, uh, an appropriate space for them. And so uh, Mayor Bocheski and I had a conversation with Mr. Wenzel uh, regarding uh, kind of where they're at with their lease and what their thoughts were. And based upon that, we said that uh, we would move forward in concurrence to see if, that, if we could terminate this lease uh, sooner rather than later, because there is a lot of interest in the, in the space uh, with more uh, permanent um, lease holders regarding that UAS tech sector. Um, so to try to move that forward. What we have here in the, in the hive is downstairs. We have a lot of <coughs> space for startups. We have space for mentors. Um, we have thread here that has more permanent space, but what we're lacking in the building is more permanent space um, for private sector entities that are, are, want to be in this and would add further value. Um, Mayor Bocheski and I said that we would move this forward. As you know, um, generally we do move things to the growth fund first, but um, uh, Corey asked if we can move sooner rather than later and get, give them some assurance of where we're at, so that's why we brought it directly to the JDA. So we think it's a mutual beneficial uh, thing for us to move forward with. Uh, the lease would end at the end of May, so we, we did um, close the 60 day. And as it's in front of you today, we think it's a win win. And the important part is, is there's a lot of private sector entities that are in this UAS data analytics space that want to get into this building and start collaborating with many of the partners who are in this building. And importantly, and under a longer term lease and at likely um, higher lease terms uh, in, in dollar amounts too. So, with that, I Stand for any questions. Uh, and Mr. as I said, Mr. Wenzel is also here to speak on behalf of the Grand, Grand Forks Herald and Forum Communications. This is uh, consistent with the, uh, the new purpose and intent of the building uh, and demonstrates uh, the success of the mayor's approach uh, with, with the Hive. Um, and I, Mr. Wenzel, this is uh, an appropriate move for, for yourself and the paper as well. But nonetheless, uh, it feels like this is a, uh, for, for me at least, uh, kind of a, a, a fortunate or at least a sad day uh, in the city's history. So if there's anything you'd like to say, sir. I didn't plan to speak per se, but I thought I'd be here to answer any questions. And yes, I agree with that. Um, but we feel it's probably a better place for us. Um, and also, yes, if, if it meant that somebody could come in and maybe take that spot for a longer term, um, that's we kind of explored several months ago. And then a, a couple of months ago, we came back and talked and thought maybe now would be the time. So uh, technically, I've signed a lease somewhere else, so I'm kind of hoping that we approve it today. Um, but if, I, if anybody has questions, I certainly can. So we could still stick you for another year? <laughs> um, uh, any questions for Mr. Field or Mr. Wetzel? Hearing that, I'd be looking for a motion. Open the public hearing. Uh, open the public hearing, please. Does anyone wish to speak to this matter? I do have, I do. A, I have one, uh, Vern Sander. Yes, sir. Good evening, Vern Sanders, 620 Conklin, uh, about this Herald Building deal. I already start out like what I was going to figure what's going to happen. How much money are we letting them out of the lease? We're being nice people. People aren't going to move in tomorrow. We had a lease signed for two, three months. People aren't going to be in a day, new leases. How much money are we letting the Herald off with? 
And I, I didn't know I was going to speak right now to this. I forgot about the, the job development or whatever, because I have two other questions uh, later for city council. So I'd like to find the dollar amount. Thank you. I think uh, part of the hope, the promise is that uh, we would actually uh, be leasing this for a, a higher uh, lease amount. Is that right, Mr. Phelan? Chair, we have potential for that. Yeah, yes. right now, um, the, the lease is at $15.99 per square foot. Right now, we're going to advertise the lease rate would be for $20 a square foot. Um, right now, they um, it's about 50 $5,600 per year right now, 56, 57. So um, we're letting them out about 11 months in advance of that. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this matter? Hearing no one else, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, further comments or questions? From JDA members, Mr. Weber? Yes, President uh, Sandy. Although I, I uh, typically disagree with Mr. Sander often, although it, I consider him a friend of mine and we, we visit once in a while. I think he's spot on. I, uh, I I don't feel like we owe the Herald anything. And uh, in my opinion, um, we should look to rent the space to someone else. And if we find somebody that's interested, at that point, make the decision if we should let them out early. But that's just my opinion. And if everybody else wants to let them out today, that's no problem. I, I will have no hard feelings. That's just my opinion. Anyone else wish to speak? <clears throat> Otherwise, was, was that a motion or just a comment? That was purely a comment. Just a comment. After an appropriate silence, do we have a motion? I'll move to deny the request to terminate the lease early. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Uh, motion passes with uh, Mayor Wachensky dissenting. Um, very good. Item 2.2, uh, request for proposals for management of venture capital funds. Mr. Pune. President Weber. Um, sorry, this is another item that we've, we've had some conversations about. This is related to our Accelerate Grand Forks loan uh, portfolio. <coughs> There is a strategic planning group that is undergoing some review and, and as part of those meetings, this has been a, a steady discussion of, of you know, how to move forward as we move forward and with the Accelerate Loan Program in partnership with the state of North Dakota and how better that we can combine our funds with other alternative funds to include with the state of North Dakota. So what's in front of you, um, I'm gonna ask Mr. Lund to come up here on behalf of the EDC, there was an EDC board meeting um, here this past month, there was discussion on this matter and about a, a potential and different way forward on investing our funds. Normally these items, again, like the first time would go to the growth fund uh, committee, but um, we brought this in front of you just so that we could get some feedback from the um, Jobs Development Authority um, and get some feedback, knowing that it's not it's not baked at this point in time and it certainly can go back to the growth fund for further discussion and it'll be continued to be discussed at the uh, strategic planning group. Um, as part of this uh, particular discussion, um, there is a sense of if we did, did move forward with the RFP process, that's gonna take a couple months. In advance, I would anticipate the growth fund committee and also the jobs development authority, you're going to see that strategic plan come through you're gonna be able to see some financial performance from um, finance director Storstead come through. And in parallel, this, the thought is this would be moving forward in a parallel path. So at least you'd have further information if you wanted to make this jump, what kind of firms would be interested in, what the terms would be, how they would lever the city's funds with, with their funds and maybe some state funds. There'd be additional information that you, you could discuss if we move these things in parallel instead of going through the entire um, strategic planning process, going through the growth fund and the JDA, putting a stop to that and then starting this, this would be a way that we would be moving forward more in parallel without any commitments other than city staff um, putting together the RP, doing some work and allowing that process to provide further information as part of the interview process, as part of the policy submittal, uh, as part of the RFPs, it would provide you additional information. 
<coughs> as opposed to just looking at other case examples is generally what we bring you as you move forward. So this is a way we're all open-minded. We're just trying to bring this to you. And one of the reasons why we thought we'd get your feedback sooner rather than later. And with that, I'd ask Mr. Lund to give you a further briefing on what the conversation was at the EDC board. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Phelan. Mr. Lund. Thank you, Mr. Phelan, Chairman Weber, Member Tinsky, Member Authority. Um, the goal of the EDC, and I think it's fair to say the Growth Fund Strategic Planning Group is to support the growth and expansion of technology companies, technology jobs in the region. We think that's achievable. Um, we have a number of assets in place. Chief among them really is the University of North Dakota and their investment in research, uh, training, and um, education in areas such as UAS, autonomy, artificial intelligence, machine learning, bio, biotechnology, that type of thing. Other assets of the Center for Innovation and assets coming online, like the high building that we're in today. You know, the, the notion of a regional venture fund has been a discussion for several years. Um, it's really a strategy to, to target and to retain existing companies that have begun in the region, think Thread, and companies that we've attracted to the region. You can think of Safety Spec, the company that has been recruited to the state of North Dakota and the Grand Forks through state programming and, and programming locally here too. We've talked a lot about the state creating the LIFT program, Innovation Technology Loan Fund, as a, as a means to do both of those things. And I guess we were inspired by that and created the Accelerate Loan Program, which was intended to do what LIFT does on a state uh, scale to do that in Grand Forks and to support the growth of technology companies here. It, I think it's fair to say it's been successful and we're gonna learn about cash flow realities and whether that can continue. Um, but it has supported 13 companies for locally, six of those are new to the region. Uh, $86,000 uh, average salary, and then the number of jobs is uh, 96 jobs in the region of those 13 companies. Um, Lift and Accelerate programs are both intended to help support and finalize commercialization of technology, but neither of those programs are really designed and capitalized to support the scale of companies that have achieved commercialization but really need to grow to that next step. And that's where venture capital and uh, venture funds come into play in terms of a potential partnership. Um, as outlined in Mr. Phelan's memo, um, the EDC was asked to, I guess I called it weigh in, but really have a discussion and if appropriate, provide, you know, a recommendation or advice, which is, you know, certainly not binding, but uh, the EDC board comes together to talk about and hopefully advance policy that supports economic growth in the region. Um, we had a robust discussion. Uh, Chairman Weber, you were there. Mayor Bachensky is a board member and Mr. Sandy attends EDC board members. Um, regularly, so he was there, so you can all certainly weigh in on what you heard and the discussion that we had at that time. Um, some of that discussion was uh, supported by sort of the expertise and the experience of EDC board members and those in attendance, but also by the example that's provided in your staff report uh, by, <clears throat> by one of the funds that we've been talking to, the Bushel example, a company out of Fargo, where you're talking about, uh, you know, sort of the early stage capital, seed capital, A, B, and C rounds, and then ultimately sort of private equity and sort of the journey and the type of funding that's needed to really scale and grow a company. Um, you know, we talked about things on the pro and sort of on the con side. On the pro side, as you can imagine, partnering with an experienced firm that has the capability to do the due diligence and, not, and to manage the funds as well as the investments that are made, that was very much on the pro side. Investing in a, you know, sort of investing in a venture fund, lose a little bit of control in that you make that investment in that fund and then those fund managers make the investment. But I think that conversation was quickly turned to those are the people that do that well. So not only would those investments, hopefully, uh, if done well, grow jobs and companies in the region, but it also result in a greater return uh, than if they were done by, you know, sort of ourselves and through local means. Um, so at the end of that discussion, um, really, at least among the EC board members, it seemed like a sound strategy to partner with an existing venture fund as a means to grow technology companies in the region. And I did type up the recommendation formally just for this body here in terms of what that looks like. Uh, so the EDC's recommendation, again, non-binding, but uh, hopefully to be considered, is that the Grant Forks uh, Jobs Development Authority consider a partnership with a venture fund as a means to support growth and development of regional technology companies and to seek proposals from interested firms. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to answer any questions. And again, a number of you are at the meeting and could certainly represent the discussion as well. And the proposals that have been mentioned in the recommendation, that uh, connects to the RFP that you're recommending. Yep. I think part of it we bring in here just to get your feedback because we're going to do some additional work and certainly um, we'll get back to the growth fund committee, but I guess while we're working, 
I'm trying to get this forward is if just the proposal does come forward, I think it'd be valuable to ultimately to the JDA to have additional information as opposed to talking theoretically what kind of proposals we could get. We try to get meaningful and genuine proposals in front of you, and you'd still have the opportunity to whether you want to move forward in this form or fashion. At least we've been able to move it forward um, sooner rather than later without any commitments. Very good. With that, I'll uh, open the public hearing on item 2.2. Does anyone wish to speak on item 2.2? Anyone wish to speak on item 2.2? Yes. You certainly can. Uh, uh, can we uh, take your comment after close the public hearing? Uh, with that, we'll close the public hearing. And Mrs. Sosky, please. Um, why couldn't this have gone to the growth fund next week? Because that's. I really don't like seeing agenda items just pop up and not go through. Yep. Uh, so. um, Council Member Osowski, it's, it certainly could have. The, the EDC board uh, requested that we get uh, feedback from the JD. It's say you're the ultimate decision makers. Uh, get your advice and have you help chart the course of number one, are we interested in doing an RFP? And then how best to then, then translate that RFP. And, and as I said, that certainly can go back to the, the growth fund for further discussion um, with the members too. But Good. we thought we'd start here and then go, um, did, have you determined? Yeah. Well, with the, the JDA being the, the ultimate decision maker on this, um, at this point, you're looking for a general green light. And then uh, as you go through those different steps and details, uh, that would uh, presumably go through the, the growth fund committee. Is that the yeah. correct? Yep. And so if you want some further dialogue at the growth fund, um, if that's one of the recommendations, then I think it can be a friendly recommendation that we move it back to the growth fund for further conversations and then and back to the to the next JDA meeting. We will do that. In the meantime, we can probably start, uh, if we get a kind of a positive signal that we're interested enough, um, when it ultimately gets back to the JDA, if you want to provide that approach, we can at least maybe have a framework um, put together. We have looked at some examples that the state of North Dakota has done um, similar kinds of things. And so um, we have some models out there as, as we move forward. Just looking for it, if, if you're interested in moving this forward, if so, uh, we're willing to put some additional effort into it. So again, rather than staff and the growth fund committee doing a, a lot of the, the detail work, not knowing that JDA was going to ultimately uh, follow one way or the other on this, uh, a, a general green light gives a sense for that work. Yes. Order? Yes, please. Just a quick comment. It's my understanding that with this, the parameters for the RFP will really be set by the growth fund. Is that kind of what you expect? You're kind of you're okaying an RFP, but we'll expect that the growth fund really set those parameters of what type of companies exactly that they want to do this. Is that kind of the understanding why this came here first? You're right. Yeah. Um, we're going to work through the growth fund committee and through the JDA, and we'll probably also um, uh, lean on that strategic. Uh, <clears throat> planning group that's been formed to to get their further feedback and and we'll reach out to other partners too along the way but uh, and that strategic planning group is actually advising the growth fund committee so it would even go back to that level so rather than that skipping any of these steps this is just again a general green light from uh, the jda so that you can engage in those to work at the, those various levels i think part of the concern too is that we've we put a hold on on the accelerate grant for us along it, it was meant to just be a whole nut that we could back. So I think it's positive that we are working on some alternative strategy and we're just not holding the whole sake and and uh, get some feedback that we are strategizing and looking at alternative ways to still move forward. Ultimately, the JDA will make the final determination and we don't know what that is um, as we move forward. Mrs. Sonsky, any further comments or questions? Does that address your concern there? Enough. 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 <laughs> Was that a motion then? No, sir. <laughs> uh, further questions or comments? I think with with this uh, feedback that I've gotten, what we'll do is we'll plan to continue to work on it. Um, we have a growth fund committee next week. We'll we'll add this matter back onto the growth fund and get some further input on it. But in the meantime, I think I've heard enough that people are interested enough for us to put to get start putting together the RFP, and it's it's a worthy action and that I think will come out of the strategic planning committee. Um, and it's probably the one thing, Chairman Weber, that, that I've heard that's probably new and unique coming out of the strategic planning that we wanted to try to get ahead of it a little bit. In fact, 
while I keep uh, pushing for a motion, you're not actually asking for a motion tonight. You are looking for guidance. You feel like you've received that at this point. Uh, any additional guidance to add for Mr. Virginia? Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, and with that, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion from Mr. Sosky, second from Mr. Weigel. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks. Mr. Gossip, you're Hey, John, it's impossible to get that blind shot. Yes. Yeah. All right, welcome everybody. We'll call the order of the Grand Forks City Council meeting for Monday, April 7th, April 17th. Uh, roll call, please, Marine. Here. 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 Here of the big event committee at the University of North Dakota. And I'm just here on behalf, to say on behalf of the big event committee, thank you to the city of Grand Forks for a generous donation to our event. Without your com continued support and the support of other businesses throughout the Grand Forks community, we would not be able to hold a successful event every year for the past 18 years. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the big event is, it's the largest single day volunteering opportunity for UND students, staff, staff and faculty. <laughs> um, the mission of the big event is one big day, one big thanks. And basically it's just an opportunity for the UND community to say thank you for the Grand Forks community for all the uh, support that we receive. Um, this year, our event is on April 29th and we have 120 <coughs> job sites and over 300 volunteers signed up. So the students and staff signed up will go to those job sites and perform like spring cleaning. We do a lot of raking, window washing, things like that, whatever the job site requests. And we provide all the supplies that are needed for the jobs. Um, so yeah, thank you again for your support. And we're very excited for our event on April 29th. Thank you. Get a picture. Announcements. I only have one announcement today. Actually, I'm going to introduce uh, a guest that we have here today, uh, Mr. Dan Burke. He's the uh, Director of Foreign Investment Review, Compliance, and Monitoring for the United States Air Force. Um, he's in town for a couple of days, so we were able to arrange for a meeting this morning. I think it was a really good, very positive meeting. Uh, we talked about how to collaborate, collaborate early and often regarding any upcoming projects and really trying to get out uh, ahead of and get out in front of CFIUS. Um, and if it does, if projects do end up going to a CFIUS review, a lot of that pre-work can be done. So uh, that was great to hear right from, from Mr. Berg. Uh, we just discussed Cirrus Aircraft. Uh, Mr. Berg has been uh, communicating with the company. And actually, I think you were around in 2011 when they did their CFIUS filing originally. Um, he's expressed to date that uh, uh, this has been a good example to date of, of, a, of a Chinese-owned company. I see Mark uh, Shramick is also here as a representative of Cirrus Aircraft. 
Um, I understand that you guys had a, a productive meeting today and a, and a site tour, which I think is, is positive. We also talked about uh, epitome energy. And uh, I think that the big takeaway I got from that for Mr. Burke is that uh, he assured us that the due diligence uh, on that one has been done uh, from a security standpoint, uh, very thorough and it's, it's completed. And really the, the concern with the, an epitome energy would just be if, uh, um, if an entity was to come in from a, a foreign adversarial nation in the future and, and uh, attempt to buy that um, either while it's in, in process or, or certainly once it's uh, operational, um, that would trigger a CFIUS review, but it's something to keep an eye on. It's something that the city can try to get ahead of and get pieces into the development agreement and it just help to have a little bit more monitoring on that front. But uh, with that, Mr. Burt, certainly love to have uh, you know any comments you'd like to make and just thank you for, for being here in the community and the, the work that you do. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak and, and, and thank you for the time. I know we kind of went over and I appreciate the, the candid discussion that we had on both sides. I think we came away with a baseline understanding kind of where we both are at, both with the city council and the Air Force. It's important to do that because the problems are going to keep coming our way. We need to work better together to solve the problems, especially when it comes to national security. Um, you know, I, I would like to take an opportunity to thank, you know, the folks in the audience here because uh, you all are great Americans. And, and I saw that all through the process of the ordeal with the Pupon project. It didn't go on un unnoticed and a lot of the information was gleaned from average citizens, just like yourselves. Tremendous. That's what we need across the country is folks like you to recognize when something's wrong to speak up because it doesn't happen all the time. And I think, uh, you know, the, the CFIUS, it's very frustrating. I think you all can share the same frustration with the CFIUS process. It's not perfect, but it is a process. And I ask that you give the Air Force ample opportunity to work with this city leadership. I have a high degree of confidence from the discussion this morning that we had that we will get to a resolution that uh, is needed for everybody on both sides. So with that, Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Burke. And that's the only announcement I've got. So from there, we would move on to item two, citizen comments. Hey, okay, I got 10 comment cards. Um, and so, um, Mr. Sander, did you say you wanted to address on some yeah, other items? Yeah, okay. absolutely. We'll let you kick it off. Perfect. Another minute, Vern Sanders, 620 Conklin. Uh, just uh, delivering a PSA to the city council. <laughs> Six and a half months from today, we have Halloween. Should have ample time to get the snowmobile trail done. So that part's over. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our roads. Six-year-old male, born and raised in this community my whole life. We've seen bigger snowfalls, worse winters than this. What's going on? I thought we bought a new asphalt truck. I travel all over for a living. Haven't seen it out yet. But I noticed today that they had to sweep out and clean the bike path behind Charlie Brown's bar. Where are our priorities? I know we can't fix them all overnight, but let's make some progress, can we? They're terrible. <clears throat> I've heard somebody had alignment paid for by the city, and I'm not being mean when I say this, I hope you get a bill for about 400 of them. With that, I'm done. Thanks. Uh, I'm probably not going to pronounce this right. Uh, Sonny. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, sir, can you pronounce, go ahead and pronounce your name yeah. for us so we can get that right. So my name is Sonny. Son, like S A N. So the A N is like on. Oh, yeah. So, so my name is Somi. Then I'm a student at UND, graduate student at UND, and I work with the residents on the university corridor project. So I'm here to speak in support of a code change that will allow mirrors in the space, like in the public schools within the neighborhood. And uh, I would like to first say that the whole idea of mirrors is part of the feedback. What's the feedback that we got from the community members, like the residents, when we started uh, the University Corridor project? 
So we had a one-on-one -on -one sessions, discussions with the people, and we asked them what are the ideas that they want in terms of beautifications, projects, um, things that they want to see happen in the neighborhood, particularly <coughs> within the university corridor neighborhood. And some of those strong positive feedback that we got was like, oh yeah, we want artworks, we want murals in our spaces. And so we, we gathered those thoughts together and we started meeting by week, by monthly. And along the line, every so, so most of the times that we spoke or we talked about uh, discussions that has to do with beautifications, the interest about mirror gets stronger and stronger. And so we like, okay, let's just work about it. Let's, let's work with it. And we introduced it to the public schools, like the public school administration. And it, was, it also became a popular thing. So I would like to say that having a mirror to me, basically, if I will agree with the community members, is not just going to add beauty and color to the neighborhood, it's also going to add a good, like amazing value, both to the schools as well as the neighborhood. And I think it's also going to strengthen the effort of the community members that have been passionate about improvement in their neighborhood, which is going to be a positive feedback and a positive development in the city of Grand Force. So that's my summary. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Renee Carterell. Sorry if I mispronounced that. No, you did perfect. <laughs> Please. Mayor, City Council, it's nice to see all of you. My name is Renee Carterell, and I work with the University Park Neighborhoods. It's a group that was started in collaboration with the City of Grand Forks, University of North Dakota, and the Community Foundation. And we've come, um, you're actually doing some lighting projects that we were working with the neighborhood on, so thank you for that. Um, I'm here to just talk a little bit about this mural project that we brought forward so that there's a little more clarity on it. So um, the, as Sonmi was talking about, the mural is the idea of beautifying and, and adding value to the North neighborhood has been coming up a lot. Um, there is a sense that the North neighborhood is lacking in community at this point and that there's some concerns in how the direction the neighborhood is heading. And so beautification and inviting neighbors out to talk to each other and get to know each other better is something that we've been working on for the last year and um, for the rest of this year we'll be here. We'll hopefully um, continue beyond this. Um, the mural um, we were looking to do is on Valley Middle School. And I wanna let you know that this is all paid for outside of the city. So this is not coming from city funds. We have additional funds coming in from other sources. Um, and the mural, we know that Valley is slated to be hopefully rebuilt <laughs> soon. Um, well, so we're looking at doing a mural on a board that could be attached to the outside of the school. And the goal was to bring the community together around this, to get their input, to um, have the students be part of this, to invite folks who are um, walking in the neighborhoods <clears throat> to see this, um, to you know, give something of a sense of this is what our community is about. I'd like to read some of the comments that students have given to us about this. Um, they weren't able to come today. It was kind of short notice for them. Um, but Jillian, um, whose last name I can't remember who works, at, she's an art teacher at the school, collected these comments for me. The students said it would make Valley look good. People would feel more welcome to come to Valley. The school would look more approachable. A mural could show the talent and cool things going on inside Valley help build a sense of community in the school. A mural can inspire the people who see it to create cool things. Cool must be the popular word these days. <laughs> a mural could help students and people in the community know that Valley is a good place. And this one I think is a really telling comment. I heard that Valley was a bad place before I started going here, but it's not bad at all. A mural could help people see that it's a good place to be. So there's a lot of interest in figuring out how to create community inside this neighborhood. And this is one of the ideas that the neighborhood brought forward and was really interested in. And there is already city code around having a mural, um, including you know, that it can't um, be offensive or seen. Those sorts of things are already in your code. Um, that it has to be maintained in good condition, those sorts of things. So all of those things are part of what is being planned with this mural. 
Um, and again, the goal is to create a sense of community, not create division or anger or a, a company that will offend people or cause the neighbors to feel like they have no say in what, what's happening. We would like to actually invite neighbors to come out and be part of the process. So um, I ask that you consider opening this up again. I know that has to go back to another stage and public comment, and I'm hoping that you'll move it forward to that. Thank you. Sheila Spicer. Ms. Spicer, please. Hello, Sheila Spicer from Van Courts. <clears throat> I'm still kind of on the food bank thing. And I want to go back a long time ago when they first came out, food bank, that we knew about them. I had sent a picture with a comment to every one of you people. And my comment was, it was Xi and Putin together shaking hands. And I said, this is not acceptable. We don't want this in our backyard. Kramer had jumped in on this too about everything happening. This is what I got from one of the city councilmen. I won't say names. Sorry, not in my backyard in regards to Fufeng is not a reasonable response, nor are the sentiments of an attention seeking politician. If Kramer really has an issue, he should bring actual facts. In actuality, in actuality, the negative takes no preparation of which he's a master. I hope you remember who sent that to me. This is what I got from Kramer's office a little bit ago. Hi, Sheila. Thank you for your message to Senator Kramer to express your concerns regarding the proposed boofing corn milling plant near Grand Forks. The Senator appreciates hearing from constituents like you who have persona views related to ongoing issues. I wanted to share with you the Senator's most recent statement regarding this. Senator Kramer joined Lori Hins on Beck News to discuss who things group purchase of Grand Forks land for corn milling plant last month. The important point is the Grand Forks City Council finally made the decision to terminate the Fufeng project, albeit it took them too long and they seemed to need someone else to make the decision for them, which by the way, the Air Force never did. The Air Force only wrote a letter saying the project possess, poses a significant security risk, which was not bad news. That was obvious to 5,000 people in Grand Forks and a whole bunch of others, okay? The best news in all of this is these heroes, as you call them, and they are, the people who stood up for their community, they set the tone for the country. They're going to change the way we approach agriculture and other foreign investments in the country. And I'd like to have, a, you know, he's thanking us. I have not heard one word ever from you people to say thank you to the citizens of Grand Forks for bringing this out. But Chinsky, you got up and sounded like on the news that you did it all. And I'm, we worked for 15 months in regards to Fufeng, and we never got a thank you from any one of them. And all of you know, which I'm looking at, who was the one that wrote the note here to me back to. It's kind of sickening when I see what's going on in this town. It's very corrupt. John Beauclair. <laughs> I'll give you an extra 30 seconds. Mr. McClure, please. Good evening, Council. I believe this is the 15th time I spoke before you. Uh, every time I came before here, if you even would have took the opportunity to spend some time with me afterwards, I could have saved you money. Uh, tonight is no different, so please keep in mind. I would like to speak to tonight due to your lack of inaction, why I believe your city attorney has legal malpractice concerns. Um, right, so legal malpractice basically means you made an error, professional mistake in the course of duty. Uh, there's four criteria, duty of care, breach, causation, and suffering of damages. So duty of care, that means you have a right, contract with the city as our city attorney and his firm does. Breach is of their duty, negligence, serious mistake. And this is the, the biggest thing to be aware of. I'm very happy on Epitome Energy, what did you guys do? You got the green light before you invested in it, right? Green light, why didn't that occur on Fufeng? Why didn't that occur? Clearly somebody didn't know what they were doing, right? Otherwise you would get the first thing. Had you contacted Cepheus, there's two big things from the day one and fill out the form properly. You would have named the city and Fufeng USA, on the form, had you did that, 
They would have came back, no way, no how, because of national security risk. All right, I think we're all on that page. So causation, would there have been a better outcome had you did that, the point, uh, the path chosen. So clearly, what would have been a better outcome? Um, this would have stopped within 45, 60 days after application, and that, sending the application in. So we have suffered damages. There's three groups that suffered damages due to this going forward. Clearly the city and the citizens, right? Because we spent money on legal fees we didn't need to spend. We also spent it on ponds and other activities. So that's the city, the citizens for the vote, right? This one really bites, right? If it would never left the city attorney's desk, there'd been no reason for a petition, there'd been no reason for the citizens for the vote. So that's 200,000. Um, the third is North Dakota insurance pool. I spoke to the CEO this morning, Brennan, Brennan Quantis on that. In other words, you filed the claim, right? Bear with me. You filed the claim for the citizens for both. They're acting as the defense, right? So they're bearing expense. If there was no claim, there'd be no expense. So those are the three groups. Coming back to the city, rough numbers, that's the biggest damages. Fufang Pond, 1.6 million. Um, we're gonna spend, or you're gonna spend approximately three to $5 million for the five businesses putting in sewer and water. Um, so what do we call that five, $6 million that would never need to be spent. So where would I like to go, right? I, I like to handle this in a calm manner, Mr. Mayor. Can we sit down and have a meeting with you, Mr. Phelan, with a couple of council members, with the citizens for the vote, citizens, to discuss this liability and how to proceed in a professional manner? I've contacted four firms that specialize in legal malpractice, right? We have something to talk about, sir. Again, I'm here to try to help you. I'm not here to pick a fight or cause any damage, right? But it's time to be responsible to the citizens. With that, thank you kindly. Thank you, Mr. Dennis Padlock. Mr. Padlock, please. Thank you. Am I to understand now that? You people are actually going to end the agreement with Fufeng? Is, is, is that what I'm understanding? You guys are under an understanding? That's a city matter. So is the agreement being terminated with Fufeng? <laughs> I think we've made it very clear that it's under a standstill agreement. The project is not moving forward. We even consulted with Mr. Burke today who stated that his attorneys thought that also made sense. That doesn't answer the question. Ma'am, you're not speaking, please. Is that Stop agreement terminated? The agreement will be terminated. Yes, absolutely, at some point. Uh, we've we, heard that for a we, while. When will it be was, terminated? Were you, there was a, a standstill agreement that set forth 60 days, I believe you were here, and that was voted on by the council. Yeah, but it, we also understood months ago that it was going to be terminated. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Gostin says, it has been terminated. We're writing these 90 days out. And, and you people do this constantly, you know? It's like bringing us into this little cramped room. Either that or you, get, you got us where the speaker don't work, nobody can hear anything. You guys play your little games. And you know, you're so obvious at sea. It's just like my good buddy here, Mr. Sanders. You know, I've been in this city a little longer than he has. And you know, this stuff has never gone on. Go into that other building. There's a whole hall of previous mayors. None of those mayors ever done anything like this. You people have, have just destroyed rather than build. Those mayors helped build this city. You guys have caused so much problems in this city that as long as you people are around, nothing's ever gonna be run proper. And you've already proven that because you will not listen. You have proved your inability to listen or to reason. You won't do it. You won't do 
what you should do. You won't do your jobs. You got counsel that has not been good counsel for you, but you retain it yet. You have Mr. Sandy sitting next to you that sits there and badmouths people and swears at women. And you know, you say, that's okay. That's just Mr. Sandy being Mr. Sandy. You got Weber here that thinks he's Santa Claus that every time somebody walks in, he wants to hand them a pilot program, our tax money. And then, you know, you guys are so easy to read. It's just like that infrastructure you put out there. You had to get out there and start digging last fall because you wanted a, a so much done so you can turn around and say, well, we got this invested in it. We can't quit now. It's our tax money you're wasting and throwing away. And, you know, I've talked to many people around this city and they're sick and tired of it. And you watch as the petitions start getting signed again, how sick and tired of it they are. But, you know, you're sitting here telling me that you come to agreement today and that this is going to be settled. It's not going to be settled. You're pacifying them just like you do with us. You know, I'm surprised that you even listened or answered them because you don't with us. It's week after week after week. You know, I asked one simple question to begin with and how long did it take? She should give me another extra two minutes on my clock. But don't you people have any soul, any morals? And, you know, I found out today that Sandy's children not only speak Mandarin, they write in Mandarin. And Chinese is harder to learn than English. And I know that for a fact. And he has two, at least two children that fly. Mr. Kavak, you will not speak about board members' children. You need to, you need to stop that, seriously. I think that I, should be very I'm obvious. I'm sorry, but, you know, it's the children of this city that I'm concerned about. Because... Uh, Jeopardy, you're willing to put them in, is unbelievable. You know, you have no conscience whatsoever for anybody other than yourselves. The, the actions you to, do and the things you speak and the things you choose to do show how you feel about others. Right. And, and you can come after anybody up here, but you do not bring children to this, okay? That's the second time we've had to tell see, you this that. is the first time I can get something out of you. This is the first time I can get something out of you. You know? How else can I get something out of you? You know? And you, you get told too, Brandon, because it's like I said last time, you know? If if they would have charged you the way you should have been charged, instead of giving you a slap in the hand, we never would have met you and we'd never be under this horrid, horrid situation you have placed us under. Joe Dempsey. I'm not going to need to speak because I was going to ask the same thing about if the Foo Fang thing has been terminated. Apparently it has not yet. That was my question. Uh, then Michael Coachman. Excuse me. Can you transfer something to the council, please? <coughs> All right, sorry. Mr. Coachman, please. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for the people who responded to my emails. Two people. Um, but my first question is to Mr. Gostad, and it's still dealing with this termination letter. Um, the city voted on uh, February 6th to terminate the buffet. So what happened between February 6th to uh, March 13th that caused you not to send the termination letter? From? Well, what did the city council vote on? Did you have a special meeting to relay that information to for a special meeting to say? Yeah, I didn't relay the information to Okay, so that wasn't brought up because obviously, because Mr. Uh, Mr. Bean, or don't you understand? That Mr. Bean didn't know about it. So did everybody on the council know? Council leadership was aware. This was voted on by the, the council at a, at, a, at a committee meeting, which, which was is why, which is why at the, at, in March. Which is I'm why saying why wasn't the letter sent, including in February? Councillor Bean, he also voted in favor. 
Right, but that was in March. But the phone call. That was March. Sir, it's hold on a minute. It's my five minutes. Can I get time back? No, you're asking. I'm asking. That's right. I said. So when did you get the phone call from Fu Feng? Was it within a week? You don't remember. You don't remember. How convenient. Something real. You don't remember. I don't. I believe you. Um, what I said to what I'm going to tell you what I have what I give to the city council here is some Bible verses that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and the ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold evil and good, for the ways of men are before the eyes of the Lord, and you ponder all the going. And the reason I'm saying that because you need to understand what's going on here. And this is a question that I have. Are you compromised? And I have here, have you ever been threatened, immediate, uh, intimidated, put in, or are you under duress? Conclus uh, conclusion, compulsive pressure, constraint, force, or any situation, or any physical or mental, uh, mental harm to you or your family, or have not been told, or have not to told the answer to the citizens in any form without prior authorization? Yes means yes, no, no. saying nothing uh, means yes. And knows me no. And I'm going to ask you, have, uh, Ms. Kramer, have you uh, been under anything on this form? My name is Lindsay. Lindsay, oh, excuse me. Mr. Mr. Uh, Coachman, you've yes. done this before. And we're not no, this is uh, this is my two minutes. Let me go ahead and do, and do what I want. Are you, have you been put under any type of arrest? You don't need to respond. Feel free if you wish. I guess Thank that, you. No. Mr. Weber. I wouldn't want to uh, take any of your time away, sir. No, well, is that yes or no or a response? <laughs> Do you want to repeat the question? Read the paper. I, I guess I don't understand why the Bible verses with the question. Because obviously you're leaving, you would come in here and say the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God, but for some reason, you're leaving God in out of out of this. It's with God that built our nation. It's pulled us together to make us a mighty nation. And for some reason, He's being left out. And whenever a nation leaves God out, that nation doesn't fare well. And it usually falls on the leadership. And if the leadership doesn't have any type of conscience to answer the people or answer to God, or if they think they're the higher power. That becomes a totalitarian type government or a communist type government. And that's not what I want. And sometimes you have to go back to the basics. Miss Rebecca. Mr. Mr. Kosher, how has God been left out of this? Is he in it? God is everywhere. Yes, he is. But he's in your decisions when you come to do things here at city council. Absolutely. Is he? Jesus Christ, the Lord, or on the money God. That is my and that's what I'm asking sir. here. And uh, hold on a minute. This is, Lord, my, this is, is, this my, is my time, Mr. Sir. Mayor. This is my time. Are you compromised? Has anybody tried you? Or can't have it both ways. Yes, you want to answer or you don't. I believe God is everywhere. And I, I do too. I believe he is yes. too. Sit down. But it's the end of the decision. time is finished. Please sit down. Thank you for wasting my time. <laughs> Mr. Spicer, please. Excuse me, sir. Do not, do not disrupt the meeting with hey, that That's not a disruption. That's sir, to try to get you your will attention. Not do that again, or Why don't you be quiet and let me speak? Sir, this is my time. I will give you your don't time. Don't interrupt me, sir. I will give this you happens sir, before with you. Sir, don't call me sir. sir if you don't. If you me. wish to speak, you need to stop right now because if you do that again, you, you will be asked to leave. No, I will not. Yes, you will. Yeah, I have more right to be You're here than you do. I've been here longer in this city than you have, sir. Do you wish to speak? Finish it up so I can move on. Okay. Do not do that again, or you'll be asked to leave. I don't, I don't need to continue. do it again. Apparently, it worked. And that's why I did it. <laughs> huh? Because you think you can talk down to everybody that comes into this room, Mr. Bochanski. You and I have come to a personal situation here. You called us out because we went against what you guys said. We stood up for what we believed. Now you're trying to make us look like the bad people because you want to sell our freaking country out. Who the hell do you think you are? 
Huh? You're going to sell us out? Do you think China is going to support you that much when they come and take over? What's going to happen when they invade Taiwan? Huh? Are they going to be our friends? Are we serious? And them guys going to stand by us? Huh? Are they going to take care of you? They're going to take care of me? They, I'm going to say our kids, our children. Is that okay? Are they going to protect us? What they believe in is a far cry from what I believe in. And that's why I'm here in the first place. It's because you're not going to sell us out. We're not going to let it happen. We've been coming here for 15 months and getting looked down on because you guys think that what you're going to do for us is better. You, you've broken all the rules. You have, you, you've, you've intensified the heat on people that came here to vote. 5,400 people and you wouldn't listen to them. Okay? And then you try to intimidate us by saying everything we did was wrong because we didn't do it the right way. We brought up our signatures to protest the annexation. You found everything you could wrong with that, okay? You've given every break and every dollar amount you could to Fu Fang. You've done nothing for us, nothing. You should leave town, all of you. Who do you think you are treating us like that? We've been here for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. And you guys think that you're doing the right thing for us in our country? You're a disgrace, all of us. I tried to work with two councilmen here, to, to, and you threw me under the bus. I shook hands with you. That was the biggest mistake I ever made. I should have let you have one right across the chops. And maybe you'd wake up. You will not threaten people in here, Mr. Stokes. I said I should have. That's not a threat. Okay? Call it what you want there, sissy boy. You can sit behind your desk there and pretend that you're tough. You're not. Okay? It's not about that. It's about how you treat people. Don't you guys ever get it? This country needs to wake up. We're in dire straits over what's going to happen to us. Right. And, it's, right. and it's, it's starting here in Grand Forks. And you're going to let this be the seed to, the, to all of this? You're disgusting. Ms. Carlson, please. Before you start the timer, if I can make a request to have our our, uh, our police officers in the room and our chief of police? No, please continue, Ms. Carlson. <laughs> this is what they need to hear. Are they always in this room? Should they be in here? Well, I'll talk loud enough that they can hear me in the hallway. It's okay, it's okay. Um, they can hear. I, I just want to share with you because I noticed on the agenda that there, you are going to acknowledge and recognize, Mr. Botensky, you're going to acknowledge, can you please look at me? You're going to acknowledge. Sorry. You're going to, that probably adds a minute to my time. You're going to acknowledge and recognize April as sexual assault awareness month, okay? I think that that has a lot of responsibility that goes along with it. I'm just going to, uh, I want you all to know that I'm a registered nurse. If you have an issue with body parts, you can please excuse yourself. Um, Think about a 21-year-old girl that's at a party. She's at a bar. She's out with her friends. She's having a good time, drinking and having fun. Nice guy brings her over a drink, which, speaking of, will you bring me my water when you get a chance? Um, he offers you a drink. You think nothing of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, your friends leave. He says he'll give you a ride home. Um, he doesn't go towards your home. He goes towards his. Uh, he invites you in for a drink. You are kind of out of it. Doesn't, you know, you say, sure, he'll give you a ride home in a few minutes. Get into the house and he grabs you by your neck. Pulls you down, forces your clothing off penetrates your vagina so violently that the very tender tissue 
between your vagina and your rectum rips wide open. But he's not done. He's going to flip you over and he's going to penetrate your rectum. Your rectum is penetrated so violently, it's going to take you months to heal. Sexual assault and rape is not about sex. It's about violence. He brings you home, you call your mom. Your mom takes you to the emergency room, calls the police. You have to go through a rape kit. You have to get undressed again. They have to examine you again. They have to open up your vagina with the speculum and they have to put cotton swabs inside and inside your rectum and it hurts so bad. The pain is so severe you can't stand it. You feel dirty and you feel worthless. You blame yourself. You cling to your mom for some kind of comfort. You want your friends to support you, but you're afraid to talk about it. The police do their investigation. You hear from the police officer, well, it's a college town, you know. You also find out that this same man, you, who you report to the police, you know who this man is. You report it to the police. You give the address, you give the name. You give everything that happened to you. You submitted to the rape kit. Another woman in the community is raped by the same man, but afraid to report it. Does this sound familiar at all? And the police do nothing. Not a thing. Right? Am I correct? No. So there was a rape that was reported to the Grand Forks Police Department that identified the man who performed the rape. And I'm not correct. Your question's so all over the place, Jody. I don't even know what you're asking. Ms. Carlson. Did a woman report a rape? I, and did you do anything about it? I think this needs a, a follow-up. I don't know that he can answer, anyone can answer. Basically, yeah, he, it's a very he, serious he can topic. answer, and, and it is a very serious thing, and I appreciate that April is an awareness month, and I hope that this all increases your awareness of what happens right in our community and what our Grand Forks Police Department fails to do for our citizens who encounter this. Thank you for letting me speak. I'll, I'll probably take all five minutes. Mr. Sandy, you had asked uh, during the JDA meeting, you said that the city doesn't owe the Herald anything. That's not true. The city owes us parking. 24 spots, that's what we signed our lease for. We do not have 24 spots, and we haven't since they dug that hole. So we, you guys are breaking the lease, not the Herald. So, oh, we want to break the lease, but it's happened here first. We don't have 24 spots. I have a lease that says we have 24 spots. We don't even come close to having 24 spots. So parking, heating and cooling, you owe us. A number of times, and I've got a folder here with complaints where our heat, as I think the record's 89 in there, um, 87 regularly, including a couple of times just in the last week, uh, 55 regularly when we come in in the morning. So we have a lease that says you'll provide heating and cooling. Uh, hold on. Jay, don't get wet. <laughs> maintaining the property. Lessor shall be responsible for maintaining the property, including all parts of the building, etc. This folder is full of complaints where we aren't getting maintained. Um, the number of times the front door doesn't lock and is left open. We have common use bathrooms here. I have, I have women that use bathrooms here, and I don't know in the morning when I come in sometimes because the doors have been left open. I don't know whether there are people that have come in at night. I have no concept of that because we don't have our own bathrooms. 
So yeah, I think the city owes the Herald something. I think they owe us a lot. We pay our rent on time all the time, except in February when I sent this letter. And I said, uh, after my email note to you yesterday, we're still battling unshoveled steps and the icy sidewalk at the Herald building. Also, there are just three or four parking spots today. The Herald has complained about icy and or unshoveled sidewalks on February 1, January 31, January 17, February 1, December 29, January 22 of the year before, December of the year before, December 2 of 2019. I wrote, considering the lack of resolution yesterday and throughout the time of our lease, Please be advised the Herald will not submit our rent check until we have these issues rectified among them. From now forward, the Herald sidewalk should be shoveled and shoveled at the same times as the sidewalks the City Hall are shoveled and, and just as thoroughly, which was another issue we've been having. Sometimes the, side, the sidewalk will have a little path and I look over at Shangri-La over there and it's perfectly, as I said, you can, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to do that. But, but you can you look over across the street and you could you could actually rollerblade on the sidewalks over there. And meanwhile, our sidewalk a lot of times had a path this wide. Um, the Herald will now uh, will in the short term have no fewer than parking six parking spaces that adjoin the building, um, which isn't always happening. Also, in a, in a time frame time frame agreed upon by the city and the Herald, um, we need to return to the issue of addressing those 24 spots, which our lease said are guaranteed immediately adjacent. Because what's going to happen is, is we'll get all our lawyers involved and we're going to decide what adjacent means. This lease says immediately adjacent, but adjacent means um, next to or adjoining. Parking lots down the street are not next to or adjoining. So we signed a lease for 24 spots here. There are not 24 spots. Um, the front door should be fixed. We went over a year without keys working for the front door. There was no key to get in the front door. We couldn't get in. Um, the front door should be fixed immediately so it remains open only during business hours and so that it can be opened by Herald key holders during off business hours. So I'd be willing to share all of this with you folks, but I'd rather keep it for myself and make files for myself. But yes, the Herald is owed something by the city and I don't think we're getting that. And to tell you the truth, I didn't want to get into all that, but, but here we are. And um, I just think there needs to be some sort of resolution. Um, if, if, if some people in this room think that there's an opportunity to land somebody that's going to be there in advance, you know, in, in another five years, I think you guys should jump at that because we're not going to be there in another five years. Um, we'd like to be out of that lease immediately because we just don't feel, you know, even as we're, even as we're working over there the other day, I think we had like the fifth leak. Um, and I can go back and find out what we have stuff leaking on our equipment again. It just keeps happening and happening and happening. So the city owes the Herald a lot not in terms of any favors or anything, but only strictly legally speaking, if you're gonna be a landlord, be a landlord and do it. But we don't feel that that's been happening. So that's why we wanna get out of the lease. In addition to the fact that we really don't need that space, in addition to the fact that we can't find parking for our people or let alone anybody who wants to actually come and pay a bill or do anything like that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lanzo. Welcome to Grand <laughs> right. Thank you. We'll move on to three awards, presentations, appointments, and proclamations. We've got four proclamations. And the first one is Sexual Awareness, uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So if you want to read all four of them in Marine, and then I will go. And we do have somebody, uh, a special guest that's online. Hopefully she's still there. Um, that'll be right after uh, part two of the proclamations. So. I'll read them all in the record. First one, Sexual Assault Awareness. Awareness Month, April 2023. Uh, second is Medical Laboratory Professionals Week, April 23rd to 29th. Uh, the third is the National Therapy Animal Day, April 30th, 2023. And finally, National Donate Life Month, April 2023, which will be followed with a presentation. All right, if you'll bear with me, I will probably read uh, definitely the Sexual Assault Awareness Month fully, and then I will probably bounce around on the other proclamations just for the sake of time, but they are posted online. Sexual Assault Awareness Month, April 2023, where a Sexual Assault Awareness Month calls attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and impacts every person in the community, whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month aims to raise awareness and educate about sexual violence and pre prevention, whereas a system of oppression such as racism, sexism, classism, heterosexism, ageism, all ableism, et cetera, contribute to sexual harassment, assault, and abuse. Statistics show more than one in four non-Hispanic black women 29% in, in the United States were raped in their lifetime. More than four in five American Indian and Alaskan Native women, 84.3% have experienced 
violence in their lifetime. One in three Hispanic women reported unwanted sexual contact in their lifetime. 32.9% of adults with intellectual disabilities have experienced sexual violence. 47% of all transgender people have been sexually assaulted in their lifetime. Whereas we recognize that it will take ending oppression to end sexual violence worldwide, making a connection between oppression and causes of sexual assault is crucial to change. Whereas we cannot do this without recognizing historical injustice and realizing how privilege and complacency reinforces oppression. We can trace the line of sexual violence to systems of oppression. Our theme for this year on the Sexual Awareness Month is drawing connections, prevention demands equity. Whereas the campaign calls on all the individuals, communities, organizations, and institutions to change the system surrounding us to build equity and respect within the community workplace and the future of our youth. Therefore, I, Mayor of the City of Grand Forks, Brandon Bochinski, join advocates and communities <laughs> across the country taking action to prevent sexual violence and hereby proclaim April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month and call on all of our citizens to support initiatives related to sexual assault awareness and its importance to a healthy community. Uh, we got uh, Medical Laboratory Professionals Week, whereas Medical Laboratory Professionals Week is time to recognize the over 320,000 medical laboratory professionals and 21,000 board certified pathologists who play a vital role in every aspect of healthcare. So therefore, I brand which is the mayor of the city of Grand Forks in the, great, in, the, in the great state of North Dakota hereby proclaim April 23rd to 29th as Medical Laboratory Professionals Week and urge all the citizens to recognize and support the vital service of the laboratory practitioner for the benefit of all citizens. Uh, we got National Therapy Animal Day, um, April 20th. Whereas Pet Partners has designated April 30th as National Therapy Animal Day. And these ex exceptional therapy animals who partner with their human companions bring comfort and healing to those in need. Yeah, now, therefore, I, Brandon Bochinski, uh, proclaim 20, April 30th as National Therapy Animal Day. I encourage all citizens to celebrate our therapy animals and their human handlers. And finally, we got a special guest, so I'm going to read this out, and then we're going to give uh, Sally an opportunity to, to, to talk about her story and also talk about uh, Donate Life. But let me read this first, Sally, then we'll let you have that. It sound good? Thank you. <laughs> All right. National Donate Life Month. Whereas each year, National Donate Life Month is observed during the month of April, where we join to recognize the altruism and humanitarianism of those who are inspired to give the gift of life to fellow human beings. And whereas this observance pays tribute to the organ, eye, and tissue donors, and their families who meaningful, whose meaningful decisions not only improve the quality of life for recipients, but in many cases, save their lives. Whereas there are more than 121,000 men, women, and children who are currently on the national waiting list for an organ or transplant, including more than 3,600 from our region. And there are tens of thousands in need of bone, corneal, and other tissue transplant. Whereas on April 23rd, 2006, Sally Jacobson received the gift of a liver that saved her life and enabled her to rejoin her family advocate for donation and as an ambassador for life source and treat each day as a special gift. And I would note to this that, that Sally's uh, liver is going to turn 100 years old on April 23rd. So that is a, a truly amazing. So, so as the donors of our living legacy, including Sally's granddaughter, Nora, gave the ultimate gift and we honor them and their families for this decision. Now, therefore, I, Brandon Bochinski, Mayor of Grand Forks, North Dakota, do hereby proclaim April 2023, National Donate Life Month in our city and urge all citizens to honor and abide by this letter. So, Sally, why don't you just tell us a little bit of Donate Life and tell us tell us your story and how unique it was to receive a, a, an organ that was so much older and, and how that was one of the first in the nation to have happen. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor and council members for having me. I appreciate your giving me a few minutes to talk about a very important matter to me. I'm a Life Source Ambassador and um, this is a perfect month to think about registering as an organ, eye, and tissue donor and encourage your friends and family to do the same. In 2006, I received the generous gift of a liver. I was dying. My surgeon asked if we would be willing to accept an older liver. At this time, he was the only surgeon in the country transplanting older livers, and he said it might give me a few years. And now I'm at 17 years and uh, on April 23rd, my liver will turn 100. Uh, Life Source is hosting a celebration of my liver. Uh, 17 people die daily while awaiting a life saving transplant, and a new name is added to the transplant list every five minutes. In our region, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota, over 3,000 people need life saving transplants, and I do everything I can to promote donation. 
In North Dakota, 53% are registered as donors. By checking the box when you get your driver's license, you have the potential to save up to eight lives through organ donation and heal more than 75 lives through tissue donation. And site can be restored for up to two lives. Uh, <clears throat> I really enjoy the opportunity of telling my story. I could talk for several hours, but uh, I know your time is limited. And I just want to say how how happy I am to have had the opportunity <coughs> to speak with you and to receive the gift of life. And I, I really want other people to also have this opportunity. I get to see my surgeon every once in a while when I go back. <coughs> and one time I introduced him at a symposium <coughs> in Minneapolis. And I, I said that I, I can't remember what year, maybe my liver was 90 at that time. And uh, when he got up to speak, he said, Sally, I'm waiting for your liver 100th birthday. Well, that time has come. So every time I have a procedure done or something, I tell the doctors, you know, there's no pressure, but uh, my surgeon wants me to be alive for my 100th birthday. So my liver's 100th birthday. So you got to take good care of me. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members for your time and consideration of becoming a donor. If you've already checked the box, I thank you for all the potential lives you may save and or enhance. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sally. That is truly amazing. And is the if someone wanted to go out and, and donate both money, um, you know, to help out the causes, at donatelife.net. So beyond organs, I'm sure is there. Would that be the, is that the website? Um, that I don't have it in front of me, but that sounds like it could be. It life source. Well, life source is this region's. Um, the internet, Google will help take care of that. All right, thank you, Ms. Jacobson, and, and we're really looking forward to, to talking with you again next year on the 101st birthday, so thank you very much. Yeah. I plan on being here, thank you. <laughs> Bye now. Uh, we can go to 3.2 now, uh, who's first there? Uh, 3.2A, Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals presentation. All right. Good evening, Council Members and Mayor Bochinski. Sherry, do you have a slideshow? It should be coming up. My name is Adrian Cummings. I serve as the board president for the Greater Grand Forks Young Professionals, and alongside me is Sam Jensen, our executive director. The purpose of our staff and it's just informational, going to discuss YP as we call it, and kind of some of the things we do with and how we feel like we support the community. Um, simply put, GGFYP, our goal is to attract and retain local young professionals right here in Grand Forks. Uh, we do this through a variety of manners, but mostly through our three volunteer-driven communities, um, social events, oh gosh, professional development and community involvement, which is akin to volunteering. Um, through these committees, we engage community members um, of, that are corporate sponsors as well as uh, UND student chapters, um, and we feel like we play a small piece in the economic development of, of Grand Forks. Do next slide. Snapshot of our organization is up there. We have more than 200 active members currently, um, 40 corporate sponsors of which the city is one. We have 36 events per year, three a month. Each of our committees hosts one monthly event and a full-time executive director, which is Sam to my left here. Next slide, please. All right, thank you, Adrian. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor Bochensky, council members, and uh, Mr. Phelan for allowing us to have the time to talk to you guys about our organization today. Uh, none of what we do would be possible without the support that we receive from the community, uh, the city, the county, uh, the city of East Grand Forks, and that, that really helps us operate. And uh, the structure of our organization is we have corporate sponsors that help us put on events on a monthly basis. Like Adrian said, we have 36 events. We really fight against the adage of there's nothing to do in Grand Forks. Uh, and all of us know that that's not true. If you look hard enough, there's plenty to do in this community. And we like to think that we play a role in helping get getting people more connected in the community. Uh, and the impact that we've had in the community, uh, these age demographic charts were put together by the Grand Forks Regional EDC. Uh, so GGFYP was created back in 2009 when a group of interested individuals conducted a, a contract in next generation consulting to figure out a way to get young professionals more connected in the region. So that red line you see there is uh, the national average in terms of all those different age demographics. Uh, the young, young professionals were traditionally thought of as people within the age demographics of 20 to 40 years old. 
Uh, but in the past year, we went through a strategic planning process that we're going to be highlighting later in the presentation where we want to be more inclusive as an organization. So we no longer define uh, young and in terms of age, but rather mindset. So if you're entering a new stage of your career, maybe it's a single mother who's re-entering the workforce. We believe that everyone stands to benefit from getting more involved in the community, meeting new people and establishing new professional connections. So the group of interested individuals, I uh, just want to name them because we wouldn't be here as an organization without them today. Amanda Bentow, Josh Reedy, Pete Haga, Michaela Schell, Keith Lund, and Barry Wilfart. Uh, they figured that GGFYP would be a great way to get people more involved in the community through the events that we offer on a monthly basis. So fast forward to 2020, you can see that there's some significant gains in the young professional age demographics, uh, particularly 25 to 39, 30 to 34, and 35 to 39. And we're aware that we're not wholly responsible for the uh, gains that we've seen in those age demographics, but we'd like to think that we play a part in helping get people more connected and uh, retaining them in the region. Next slide, please. This is a little snapshot of our board of directors. I'm in the top left. I, I, that was before the mustache. Um, <laughs> the other folks, hopefully there's some familiar faces there. Um, all these folks are employed by members of our community and employers and that all feel that um, young professionals have a role at the table and that they want to be led. Next slide, please. The next bunch of slides are just kind of some snapshots of the things that we do throughout the year that highlight our committees. Um, this next two are social events. So these two events are some of our more popular ones, Artsy, and this event we do at the North Dakota Museum of Art, where we invite local artists in and actually pay them for a change. Um, and they exhibit their art at the Museum of Art. That's a fantastic event we normally have between 400 to 600 people attend that. And then Friendsgiving, of course, as the name indicates, is held around Thanksgiving time. Uh, some other, oh, we can go to the next slide. Some other ones are just some different things that we do. That, like Sam had said, we feel like we fight the adage that there's nothing to do in Grand Forks. And so some different opportunities we've made available for our members, pumpkin patch, a bingo night, sand volleyball, things of that nature. Uh, to Adrian's point, we do receive pretty good uh, event attendance at all of our events. On average, we have anywhere between 20 to 40 people who attend our events, regardless of what committee they attend. But we also have some keynote events like the Artsy, where we get up in the hundreds. Earlier this month, we had our annual launch where we had north of 90 people attend the Grecky Alumni Center on the campus of UND. So we have a consistent event turnout, people who are engaged within our organization that we're very proud of uh, the involvement that we have. We'd like to consider ourselves the best young professional network in all of North Dakota. Uh, so the next committee that I want to highlight is our professional development committee. Uh, the keynote events that we have through the professional development committee would have to be our lunch and learns and dinner and learns. And this is where we bring an expert on a particular topic in. Uh, they talk about the topic that they're an expert in, and then we feed our members uh, either lunch or dinner. Recently, we've been focusing on topics that pertain to personal finance. Earlier this year, we had a first-time homebuyers course where we had a mortgage lender and a real estate agent talk to our members about how do you get a uh, involved in the home buying market in Grand Forks, what, res what resources do you get in touch with to get that process started? And then after that, we also had a first time business owners course where we had a panel of entrepreneurial experts, Sandy Luck from Bully Brew Coffee, Nicole Evans from the North Dakota Small Business Development Center. And then we also had an attorney uh, talk about, hey, how do I turn my business idea into a reality? How do I get it off the ground? And what resources do I get in connection with to get that started? Uh, and then something beyond what we want to do with each of our committees is we've also established a community mentorship program under the um, professional development committee. We had 16 people sign up for this. It's not a career mentorship program, but rather a community mentorship program. So if one, someone wants to go into banking, we're not necessarily going to match them with a banker, but rather we're going to match them with someone we believe is socially compatible and will allow them to utilize their Rolodex of professional contacts in the region and to help out the person who's being mentored to get established with more professional connections all throughout Grand Forks. So the people who signed up for this program, it was a good mixture of UND students, Northland Community and Technical College students and recent college graduates. And uh, we just sent out the midpoint survey just this last week and we've uh, received some pretty remarkable feedback in terms of uh, people saying that it's helped them in their professional development and helping get them more connected in the greater Grand Forks community. To Sam's comments, our goal is to engage with the, the <coughs> students of colleges and universities locally to try and keep them here. Um, We'd be kidding ourselves if we didn't think UND was a ginormous recruiting point for our community. So getting to those folks and saying that, hey, there are opportunities not only professionally but personally here in this community, we feel is a great step for us as an organization. And as the survey maybe indicates, has yielded some positive results for us. Next slide, please. Could you go back a slide, actually? Sure. One more. It's impossible, John, to go back. Okay. One more, please. I appreciate you being uh, concise and uh, 
tight on the time. But did you get everything you wanted on this slide? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, those are just further examples of uh, lunch and learns and dinner and learns that we covered. So on the right there, we had uh, we were at Bremer Bank talking about tips on budgeting and saving. But uh, on the left, uh, we don't also just focus on topics that pertain to personal finance. We brought in the Blue Zones Project team to bring them in and educate our members about the work that they do in our community to help make Grand Forks a healthier place to live. So thank you for that opportunity. <clears throat> Next community is community involvement. Like I said, this is akin to volunteering. Um, on the left side is the Orange Bag, actually the, the big event. We get help from them every year. Um, maybe if, if you've looked at your front door, you'll see there's an orange garbage bag. Um, it's like a donation drive type of situation. You know, please donate things that you feel like would be pertinent. Um, and then we get those goods and invite in local charities, whether that's Northland or um, other avenues that we can collect donations for on a large scale and then redistribute out to them. And we get tons of help from the UND's big event every year. And Stable Days Youth Ranch, that's on the east side. Um, we're not just contained to Grand Forks. We, we try to get out a little bit farther than our city limits. And we just helped them with some things last summer, gardening and things of that nature. Next slide, please. These are a few more notes, just general volunteering events that, that we've helped out with. I think Mayor Bochensky is featured on the left there for the Steinhold at Oktoberfest. Did you, did you win that competition? I won free tickets <laughs> the next year, but they give me free tickets every year anyway. So I got an extra set of tickets, so that's great. That's good to hear. Yeah, that was a great event. To Adrian's points about orange bag, if you happen to see an orange garbage bag uh, on your front doorstep that is not trash, do not throw it away. Attached to that is a flyer of area nonprofits that were helping uh, raise items for them. So we're helping out eight different nonprofits this year, and we just distributed 1,000 garbage bags throughout uh, Grand Forks neighborhoods. And then we're in alignment uh, with the big events with UND on uh, April 29th to you know sort through those items and hand them off to the nonprofits that we're helping out with. <clears throat> Member at large is another position on our board of directors. We have two people who serve on our board of directors who are elected by our membership base. So at the end of each year, we'll send out a poll and people will determine who they think uh, would best represent their interest within our organization. And some of the initiatives that they've brought on is BAN. That's an application that we use to more effectively communicate with our members. We have over 160 people uh, registered onto that application. And some of my favorite features are the event reminders that are sent out to people's uh, home screens on their phones. Uh, we send out emails and we try and market on social media, but uh, sometimes that's not as effective as we'd like it to be. So BAND is an application that we're using uh, that's helping us get more increased involvement from our members and getting higher events attendance at all of our events. Then we've also established a few volleyball leagues through the Grand Forks Park and Rec, their leagues. We were in the Winter League. Don't ask us what our record was, uh, but we think that this is important for people in the community who might have an interest to join these leagues, but maybe they don't know enough people to be invited onto one of them. Uh, so we have two, we had two volleyball leagues on the hard court, and then this summer we're taking our talents to the sand, and uh, we are able to support two different teams uh, for those parks and rec activities. A little bit about our strategic plan, and that, that's what brings us to this meeting. Um, so at the end of last year, we went through the strategic planning process and, and identified some areas of improvement as an organization that we could work through. Um, the first of which is brand awareness. Um, there's a lot of buzz coming from Keith. There's a lot of buzz about this organization when it started, um, and since then it has died off. So we've been trying to get in the media more and do more you know, put activities of this type um, to get in front of community leaders to let them know that we're still here and still, still kicking. Yeah, thank you, uh, Adrian. So lack of brand awareness, the action is we have hired a marketing intern that has taken over uh, the responsibility of running our social media pages and allowed myself as the executive director to focus more on development of the organization, development in terms of bringing in more corporate sponsors to be able to recruit more members to attend uh, to see an increased amount of event attendance on a monthly basis. So we're very happy with the work that we've received and we're able to offset the expenses of that with Intern GF, a program through the Grand Forks Region EDC. Uh, the next issue that we determined uh, is uh, finding out who our target audience is. Uh, so obviously there's a large, there's different groups throughout the community. We have uh, students at UND, Northland Community, Tech, community Technical College, recent college graduates, uh, members at the Grand Forks Air Force Base. So we had to determine who do we want to market our organization to. And we determined that all of those people, we, uh, we have the cap capability to see increased collegiate attendance at all of our events. Uh, market to all of the employees of all of our corporate sponsors by getting in touch with the HR offices at each of these organizations and being active at, about being present on the Grand Forks Air Force Base and making sure that we're integrating the airmen out on the base uh, and getting them more involved in the Grand Forks community. 
The next issue we identified is organizational clutter. For those of you that run businesses or have any kind of personal life, you know that things can kind of get fall through the cracks. Um, being a local nonprofit that, that turns over our leadership every few years, um, there's a lot of stuff that we felt was, was maybe missing as far as um, historical awareness and things like that. So we've been working a um, variety of different ways to try and compile that information in one place to, to ensure our organization can stay strong moving forward. And the next issue is uh, member involvement. Uh, so we have a lot of people who fill out the membership registration form, uh, but then the issue becomes, how do we get them to attend our events? So what we're doing is we're sending out video updates to all the HR offices at all of our uh, corporate sponsors and uh, video updates of people just reminding them that this is an additional benefit that your company provides to you. Here are all the events that are coming up later this month for you to be involved in. So we've seen a pretty good uh, return on investment in terms of putting those videos out on YouTube, sending them out to the HR offices of our corporate sponsors. And we've already seen a pretty good return. Just in the last couple of months, we've seen an increase of about 10 people for events. And that's not including the annual launch where we had north of 80 people attend that event. The last one is internal administration, which feedbacks on the organizational clutter piece. Um, being a local nonprofit, it's tough to do all the things. There's not necessarily someone that's specialized in finance or marketing or bookkeeping or things of this nature. Um, so with internal administration, pairing with organizational clutter, we work to outsource some of these things to, to local firms and, and just try to free up Sam's time as far as um, what he does day to day and again, organizational continuity. Next slide, please. That's all we have for you. We'll open up to questions at this time. Well, first, I'd just like to thank you. I mean, the, the growth in that age group and just the positive energy that, that the young bring to our community, um, just couldn't appreciate that more. And the work you do is important. I think we've a lot of us have seen people had to leave. They have to leave and go to Chicago, Minneapolis, and a lot of times they want to come back and raise their families here, but you might lose a decade. You might lose them completely. So the work you do is, is crucially important for a growing community and a strong community. So thank you for that. Um, any questions for the Y piece from the council? All right. Well, you guys thank have you a great all. evening. Yep, thank I you very much. I have a quick question. How come you guys never invite us, directly invite us to any events? We'll have to change that. Yeah, we'll have to change that. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank it's probably been a couple of months now since uh, council has seen any updates regarding the scoping work that uh, SRF is currently doing. Uh, this is a project that is being headed up by the city of East Grand Forks in partnership with the city of Grand Forks and both respective counties. Um, we ended up kicking off this project with a kickoff meeting on April 7th. So this project ends up covering kind of two primary areas. The first area is the 32nd Avenue in Elks Drive, and the second area is down in Merrifield Road area. These are two very important bridges for the city. Um, next slide, please. Sorry, Mr. Franco, can I ask a question? Please. According to the staff report, when, when we uh, talked about this, and, and I'll read you what the staff report says. Motion by Weber, second by Lunsky to recommend approval of the agreement with the following changes to eliminate reference to 32nd Avenue South and Elks Drive and to uh, include that we are pursuing a study of river crossing or crossings with funding of the study 25% cross share. Knowing, knowing that we were eliminating Elks and 32nd Avenue, why is it that the very first slide has the 32nd Avenue South bridge on it? If I remember correctly, we were eliminating specific language. We were looking at uh, river crossings. Right, uh, and specific language. locations. Yes, we now the study's been done. And no, if you go back one, one, one slide, both cities have identified, and they're, you know, they're specifically uh, discussing the two that we told them to remove from the study. Right. We can't change history. Those were, were identified by uh, the city I, I in previous studies. 100% correct, but the, it is completely uh, superfluous information. It is unnecessary information to have that as part of this presentation that they're providing. It's steering the, it's steering the discussion. I, didn't put it in. I know you didn't. I know you didn't, but, but they did. Okay, when is the next meeting? 
Uh, that I do not have offhand. This is uh, an ongoing process, but that is definitely. Is have the conversation with SRF in the future that we are talking uh, the way that we agreed at least upon, and then we put our money in based upon that. So certainly, you won't have to pass that along. In fact, we we didn't receive the twenty five percent share from the four players, which is the my se the second question yeah. that I have, Mr. Krenko. I I I went out of my way to try to find comprehensive meeting minutes from whole county's meeting. Of course, their meeting minutes are about as bad as, as can be. But I'll, I'll read you, have you read the minutes? Were you at the meeting? I was not at the uh, the county meeting, no. Okay, I'm hoping we can get a better uh, better description of what actually happened for the Polk County commissioners to not support a 25% cost share. The meeting minutes say, Richard Sanders, Polk County Highway Engineer, discussed Polk County's financial participation in the bridge study. Uh, David Murphy was there. He was president of the city of East Grand Forks, has taken the lead to coordinate the study with Polk County and Grand Forks counties and the city of East Grand Forks. A motion was made by Commissioner Wilthy, seconded by Commissioner Holly, to adopt a un and adopted by unanimous vote of the board of Polk County with a not to exceed $20,000. For Red River Bridge Crossing. I'm, I'm assuming that from it being introduced to when they made the motion, there was all sorts of discussion about it in the middle, and none of it is in, in the meeting minutes from Polk County, which is really disappointing, in my opinion, of, of their record keeping. More importantly, I'm trying to understand what happened. Why did Polk County not agree? I know, you, and you weren't there. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Feeling, do you have any information regarding that? I asked the same question, um, Mr. Sandy, because uh, my understanding is they, there wasn't a lot of detailed discussion other than they felt like 20000 was, 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 was a fair number. amount that sure. came out. And then, you know, further because of that, you know, because I, I encouraged, uh, I, I attended the Grand Forks County meeting, asked for the 25%, we got the 25%. I encouraged my counterpart in East Grand Forks, uh, Mr. Murphy, to go back to the Polk County to ask him for the additional amount. He was there. It's yeah. in the notes. He was and there. so my understanding is uh, for Mr. Murphy, what East Grand Forks decided to do, instead of going back to Polk County, East Grand Forks decided just to pay their 17000 plus wow. increment instead of going back to Polk County, East Grand Forks. Uh, agreed to pay their additional cash. So the whole amount for the study was paid. We only paid our quarter. <coughs> and that was the, the intent of the motion. And I think if you look at our motion, the motion is that we'd all pay 25%. Um, East Grand Forks paid more because they picked up that uh, incremental gap of Polk County. That's between them. It is and it's not. It shows Polk County's intent on bridges, in my opinion. I believe it. Or at least for paying for studies. Well, yeah, certainly, but uh, I think I think the I believe that the motion for twenty five percent was done with with the intention of setting the stage for the future of how we're going to be dealing with funding these bridges. And I believe Polk County sent a very loud and clear message that they only think they're a small percentage of of what we're talking about doing. And so. Um, I become a little bit uh, skeptical uh, when other governing bodies do things like this because they typically do them for a reason. And so I am, I, I believe we, because they're not paying 25% and our motion was that every, each taxing entity paid 25%, I believe that we have to revote whether we're actually gonna go forward with our 25% or not. I, and I'm not saying, we should or we shouldn't, but I believe based upon what they did, we have to revote. That's just my opinion. I haven't asked the, the city attorney's opinion on it. Was, um, okay, I guess I got one question. Was Polk County's hesitance more that they were more interested in Merrifield than they had uh, in, an, in an inner city bridge? Is that where they were their hesitance? I guess I had run across it at some point. I can't help Mr. Kern. That's what I heard. I heard their, their share was, you know, that, you know, we're obviously interested in Merrifield and, what I what I've tried to say is when we go through this 150 thousand odd study is that we're going to look at both river crossings, you know the we'll call it the neighborhood bridge and, and some sort of bypass bridge, and that it's really a 50 50 deal, 
And I think even the cities could say this, as I know this is gonna be shocking to say this, the city is in the county. So actually, um, but um, they could participate in both more so than us participating in a miracle because that's outside the city of Grand Forks or the city of East Grand Forks. So I think we have to continue to remind counties that the cities, and I'm gonna say, I'll speak for the city of Grand Forks is probably one of the most important things to Grand Forks County. From a growth and development, uh, probably 80% of the population is in the city of Grand Forks for the county. Probably 80% of the value of a mill is in the, inside the city of Grand Forks. Um, so if you levy mills in the county, you know, almost 80% of that is coming from the city of Grand Forks property. And so I think we have to have this mindset is, and, and the other part of this study is they just have to work together. The bypass bridge and the, the neighborhood bridge, let's see how they play together and what, what one does and what the other, and maybe we can justify one's more important than the other one. That was the whole part, part of that is that they are integrated in some form or fashion. So, um, but I think um, whomever explained it to Polk County uh, perhaps didn't understand gravity and the um, comprehensiveness of that, um, why we wanted them to participate. I wasn't there either, but uh, that's what we tried to explain to Grand Forks County and they agreed to pay their 25%. President Sandy, I'm not insensitive to your concern about the way that that was split up when clearly our intent was that there would be four partners. Uh, but there, there were four partners and the, we, didn't pay, we weren't asked to pay more than our share. Uh, at this point, is this, uh, presentation tonight, a result of the study that has been done? What What is the, the nature? Been done. The study has not been they done. They just did so. the kickoff meeting a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So on the 7th, uh, SRF ended up holding a kickoff meeting. They ended up providing us a slide deck of about 25 to 30 slides, which is uh, on the website. And what I'm showing you this evening is kind of uh, a boiled down version of that. I've got about four slides, uh, half of which you've already seen. So why don't you go through the slides? Yeah, Those concerns through. have been expressed. Just listen to the slides, Valerie. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Start with the slides. Let's do the slides. Mr. Cranko, please. Certainly. Um, so what this work is involving is the scoping report or the scoping portion of the study, really finding out what do we have, studies that have been completed, reviewing those studies, finding out from the cities, the counties, the respective DOTs, and all the other state and federal agencies that would have in, a, uh, state in this bridge project, all the requirements they would need in order to complete a uh, environmental document and move towards construction of a bridge. Uh, so this portion, as I kind of mentioned, you can kind of see on the screen, the scoping portion uh, is identifying the transportation needs, the data gathering, engagement with the other entities, and if you can go on to the next slide, John. This is the proposed timeline that they have uh, and the various elements that they have of the scoping phase of the project. It's looking like, uh, based on their current timeline, that they're looking for completion in November. And uh, that includes the project management, which is all those coordination meetings with city, county, state DOTs, those other agencies, um, identifying which agencies have jurisdiction, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers, with the uh, flood mitigation project. Uh, I believe the Coast Guard has been mentioned before in there. The DOTs um, developing an outline of the program and environmental linkage study process, trying to figure out what is the, the road that we need to travel down and all of the intricate pieces that we're going to need as part of that environmental document. David, we have this uh, 25 slide uh, PowerPoint presentation. Are these slides that you produce based on it or are they taken from this they are taken directly from it they are why they've got so that srf uh, can you tell us the slide number that we would go to uh, that i do not know offhand it's okay. going to be one of the last okay. ones one of the last ones okay i want to say it's uh, just before the question slide um oh, okay and then the other aspects of this phase is looking at uh, a estimated professional service and essentially a scoping services for what the programmatic and environmental linkage would require uh, including costs and then the one of the more important pieces as well is figuring out available funding programs that we might be able to take advantage of in order to construct the bridge as well as move through the environmental document portion and the design portion 
And uh, with that, I'll try to answer any questions I can. Good question, Mayor. Please. I see uh, on uh, task two, when they're reviewing uh, previous studies, um, when we were originally presented this um, as the multiple bodies, they had talked about reviewing the 2045 street and highway plan. Now they're only including the updated river crossings alternative analysis menu or memo. They're, they're not saying that they're going to review the 2045 street and highway plan, which I pointed out at that meeting was flawed. And so have they changed the scope of what they're actually doing since we were presented what they were going to do in the first place? Not that I'm aware of. That is another thing I can definitely look into. And I know Stephanie Helper with the MPO is here. We, and I believe the, uh, the, on the transportation plan, the street and highway element, the... It's the reason why I was asking so many questions about all of the reviews that they were going to be doing, because I know that reviewing the 2045 street and highway plan involves reviewing the last four iterations of the plan to make sure that the analysis is accurate. And I knew that that was going to take a significant amount of time, which is why I specifically asked about it. And everyone says, yep, no problem. That's, that's included. Yet I don't see it in here that it's included. If you want to talk about uh, the 2015. I guess I'll, it's not necessary. I'm just, I want everyone to know that I'm concerned about this, right? I think the issue originally with the transportation plan was it's been a decade or more old plan based off of data from Fargo where we didn't even have, you know, more localized and maybe it's been improved upon, but I think there was always concerns about where that transportation data was coming from and, and making sure that that was accurate. So fair, that is a fair statement, Matt. Thank you very much. So um, what you see on task number two, that doesn't go into detail of all the plans that they're reviewing. We also gave them more of a list of stuff in the kickoff meeting of other ones that they should look at, as well as our current travel demand modeling will actually be the new one for the 2050 plan. We'll get this April sometime. So as soon as we get that, we'll put that in their hands, as well as we're hiring Urban STK. It's a company, it's kind of um, real life data that's only a couple of days old, where that will give us some more data information too in real time. That will share with them. Thank you. I've said my piece. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, anybody else comments on this presentation? That we will, Mr. Mayor, do we have to take action on only presentation? Mr. Gosted, yes, but, but do we need a, I think we need an action, but that's, again, I'm not the attorney. You'd have to bring a, a motion for reconsideration, and the timing of that is the next council meeting after the original motion. Now, I know we've done some research on this, some other uh, matters when there's been a change of circumstances um, that those matters can be uh, uh, re-voted on effectively. I think it was an issue of, um, I can't remember what it was, but it, there is a question about whether you could uh, do a reconsideration after the next meeting had already passed. And the answer was no, unless there is some change in circumstances that would warrant revisiting the, the topic. So is that a considered material change that we got from 25% to not to exceed 20,000, which I think is half? Is that a material enough change? It certainly, it, it could be viewed that way. I'd like to take a look at what the agreement says and, and uh, take a look at whether that meets the criteria for change in circumstances. But just overall, there is a basis to, to do so, um, but there has to be some sort of change in circumstances from the original uh, time of the motion. Okay, maybe so you're going to more. Could I ask Dan, just because we're in the midst of this and it's a known issue, right? Could we put reconsider, put it on the action item to reaffirm even with the current funding spread to that we reaffirm that we will move forward? Tonight, tonight's agenda, you'd have to get a motion to amend the agenda that would require at this point unanimous consent. And ultimately, our amount isn't changing. We haven't changed our commitment to it. Only the change would be Polk County's. I'd make the motion to amend the agenda to add um, reaffirming our uh, stance related to the SRF grade study. So I'm going to take that as being in order. So we do a second to it. We've got a second. Um, so now, any further discussion on what was motioned? 
So now that there's a motion, a second on the floor to add that to the agenda, I would just put it at the end. So that as an, an item at 5.23 uh, to reaffirm the, the city's this has to be commitment. Here. So without this getting a unanimous vote, it would not and we'd have to look at the future agenda. So um, for now, it would be all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Oh, same sign. To, to amend the agenda? Yes. The agenda. This is to well, we have one no. It would need to be unanimous at this point. So I, you, what, uh, which way would you like your vote to go? Um, can I abstain? Yes. Okay. Um, I still, okay. If you don't vote, it will be in the affirmative. So. Okay, can you explain it a tiny bit more? Uh, Mr. Sandy, okay. Mr. Sandy had, President Sandy had a motion to add to the agenda that we would rediscuss our funding um, for this project based on the fact that Polk County has decided uh, not to fully fund their 25%. So we, at that point, added to the agenda, we would be able to decide if we wanted to reaffirm that or to not reaffirm it. Um, so the vote was taken only to add this to the agenda at this time. Um, otherwise, there will be discussion that may be added at a future agenda. And haven't we already hired SRF? So we have we haven't. Miss Graham Forks has hired. All right, I just need to and know we for now. To pay 25% of the based so upon a 25% across the board cost. Yes. 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 So we do we do have a no, so it's not unanimous, so it won't be out of the agenda. I just need to know which if I were you, I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you can say nothing and you'll be out of the affirmative if that's what you prefer. I'll say nothing. All right, I, so I, have we, one, I have one more question. So well, okay. this, how do we get this on the agenda two weeks from today? What, what motion do we need um, to put this back on? Yeah. I think it would just be a, a, a if you determine that there's been a. a if for now, let me change. let me just say that that, that motion has been denied. Yep. Um, it was defeated okay. by a vote, um, uh, four to one, with uh, whoever dissenting. Yeah. Okay. And, and so then the next, the, if you were going to uh, do it not under reconsideration, but kind of the change of circumstances, I think we take a look at what what has been changed is the when the original motion and uh, discussion with council leadership the mayor and the city administrator as to uh, the agenda it's kind of a non-answer uh because i want to take a look at what what, what has changed since, it's, since yeah. the original so motion. My, from my standpoint if there's a material change then i think the council leadership could ask for to place the agenda with start the community the whole next week uh, if we can have it and answer that quickly is that fair great all right. Thank you. We're going to move on to 3.4. We have a legislative update. Mr. Bernstrom, it's near near the end of the legislative update, but we're going to ask for you to be tight and concise this evening and get through this so we can get action items. So no, no problem. Um, just, just a couple updates. I'm going to, uh, just going to touch on uh, the, just a handful of bills. Uh, the, the pension bill that we've been following is is not been voted on on the Senate floor. Uh, heavily amended, so whatever is approved by the Senate would have to be concurred by the House. Um, there is actually discussion in committee of let's get this to conference committee to continue to hash it out. So that, that no resolution on that one. Um, and then the other bill we we're talking about when we were talking about the infrastructure revolving loan fund, which is Senate Bill 2330, that one has gone to conference committee. Um, they put $150 million back into that to help backstop that infrastructure revolving loan fund. Um, you know, we, we were feeling all, all pretty good about that to keep that revolving loan fund moving. Um, that has gone to conference committee. Um, with no uh, schedule yet as when they will discuss. The, the reason it goes to the conference committee is the two house, the two sides voted on separate bills. So it needs to go to the conference committee. And then uh, other than that, uh, we're, we're looking good on water. Um, house bill, or excuse me, Senate bill uh, 2020 has over $300 million towards water projects, including Red River Valley water supply. We're pleased with that. Um, and then on the DOT budget uh, standpoint, uh, their bill is House Bill uh, 1012. Um, uh, still working through it, but they, they proposed this year having a flexible transportation fund. To the Transportation dollars have, have so many uh, guidelines to them to give them some freedom to help uh, political subdivisions with some small projects. Um, that fund has, as of right now, about $221 million in it. Um, so that, that is a, a very good positive. We'll see how they're going to administer that. I'm sure it'll go through a, some sort of big process, but uh, that, that's, that, that will be moving forward. Other than that, I'm open for any questions. That was very good, Mr. Bernstrup. Uh, Mr. Weber is chair of the legislative committee. Anything further for this Thank evening? You. I just appreciate the work that you both done on this. I know you're constantly monitoring uh, 
of those bills. If we're getting near the end. I think we'll have a good good update uh, at the next council meeting to let us know exactly where we're we'll Probably have a session end report to you guys in June once we see how all these bills cash out. John and Todd and the staff have done a, a great deal of work, including uh, multiple trips down to Bismarck, uh, supporting the city on, on various issues. Right. I show up for an hour or so on Friday afternoons. Thank you. I'm going to move along to item four, public hearings and secondary ordinances. All right, 4.1, determination of protest for project number 8573, district 771, reconstruct Legend Lane, 28th Avenue South to Legend Lane. Um, no protests have been received on this project. All right, I'm going to open up a public hearing for item 4.2. Anybody here wish to speak on item 4.2? All right, seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing and open up for council for discussion. We got a motion to approve. Second from Mr. Weigel, second from President Sandy. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. All right, we'll move on to five action items. Um, I think I'm going to leave. We, I, I think we need to uh, at least pull 25.21 uh, and 5.22, as those are from the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, meeting, uh, with a, a do, came out with a do not pass, essentially denied. Uh, so I do think we should, you know, Discuss those and decide because we would be killing it at this point um, if we just decide to, to move forward with the recommendation. If we do approve it, it would go back to planning zoning for a final and then come back to us. So I think it's important discussion. 521, 522. Any other items that council wishes to have pulled um, for tonight? I know there was discussion item 5.2. That is a, um, a bidding at this point, and we're not approving anything. It's just getting bids back. So if people are interested in further discussion on that, I'm certainly willing to pull that. So any other items other than 5.21 or 5.22 that council would like to pull this? 5.7, 5.8, and 5.14, please. Thank you. All right, anything else from council? Okay, we'll look uh, for approval then, and that was 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6. 5 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, and 5.20. Uh, approval. Motion approved. We got a second. So, President Sandy, second from Ms. Osowski. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All the same side. Motion carries unanimously. So, remaining the source that we would have uh, items 5.7, 5.8. 5.14 and 5.21 and 5.22. So, do you want to read that 5.7, please? Starting with 5.7, then, possible to state an agreement with Community Foundation for Project 8645, which is University Avenue Street Lights, uh, Roman Tracks, and North 20 Street. Very good, man. All right. Any further discussion? Anybody wishes? Uh, item 5.7. Any further insight? We got a motion to approve, second. and we got a second. So, motion from Vice President Weber, second from Mr. Weigel. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries four to one with uh, President Sandy said. 5.8 bid awards for project 8644 and 45 South 4th Street, uh, four, 4th Street Lights, Kitson to Gertrude and University Avenue Street Lights, Robo Tracks and North 20th Street. All right, that was a mouthful. Thank you, Ms. Dorstad. Uh, same procedure. Any comment? Uh, just a comment. I, I believe we should put both of these out. For even, but I also understand that we may not get better bids and we might lose the community foundations grant. Uh, but you know, at a 33% over overrun, there's a lot of room to wiggle there. But but I'm totally okay if everybody else just wants to move on. I'll move approval. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Do we have a second from Ms. Oselski? All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none. I believe. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries four to one with President Sandy dissenting. 5.14, payment in lieu of taxes, requests from on-site companies, and also attached since last meeting is an exemption analysis. Thank you. And I think this, this warrants, I think, further discussion. I think, uh, you know, if the, if, if the council wants to move forward and wants to see projects like this happen, I think we already have a deficiency of projects like these. I see how projects like these take little amounts of service from the city, but can add you know a tremendous amount of the back end to 
um, the property tax bill, specifically to the general fund. So I, I see a, you know, a tremendous value in, in trying to spur some growth, especially west of the interstate. Um, you know, if we had a number of these that were coming in the last three years, I think we would definitely be a little bit more hesitant on this, um, but certainly open to you know, the council on how they want to move forward on this one. They did do an analysis. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, uh, not taking into the time value of money, it would be a little bit, the city would get a little bit less money if it went to a 10 year versus a five year. I do think the benefit is you've got a property that pays $131 in property tax right now, sitting as it is. And with this project coming, I believe the amount, uh, even in the initial first couple of years, would be $22,000. Um, so I guess the question is, does the project happen or not? If it doesn't happen, we continue to draw $131,000. Um, if it does happen, we get twenty-two thousand for a period. Then after five years, the, the full fare, which I think jumps up to around two hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, we're certainly not paying any money into it. We're just waiting longer to collect a, a larger sum. So I think we've got to make a decision if this is uh, something that we want to see happen, more of that happen, um, or not. So I think that's my take on it. So I guess I'd open it up to council their decision. Mr. So Mayor, um, I did uh, per my mentioned last week, I did reach out to Eric Lund as well as uh, Sheriff, past uh, Sheriff Bob Ross. Uh, I didn't hear back from the Sheriff, unfortunately, but <coughs> had a, a very nice visit with Eric Lund. It uh, sounds like there are a lot of good things going on with the school district as well. Um, his take on it was he, he preferred that we just make these decisions and, and not worry about um, the school district because they're not in economic development, the city is. Uh, but he also said, um, Six one half a dozen or the other. So, uh, um, which in that case, um, I'll make the motion for the five year pilot at 100. percent We got a motion. Do we have a second? We got a second from Ms. Lunsky. Any further discussion of this item? And I think it's something we can certainly revisit and, and see how this moves forward. Yeah. As, as Santa Claus, I'd like to quote the former president uh, Gershman, who used to say, "We're giving away 100 percent of this." Right. We're getting nothing right now, and now we start getting something. And, and in the near future, we get quite a bit. So uh, uh, we would, uh, I'm ready to vote. Yeah. All right, seeing uh, any other, any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. All right, then 5.21 introduction of ordinance and preliminary approval of rezoning uh, 5707 South Washington Street to Perry Second PUD and then number seven. Okay, and it's, it's my understanding that, yeah, that the planning and zoning did vote to, to not approve this. And uh, you've had some conversations with the developer and he's, he's um, okay with coming back as a conditional use permit to move forward. So really, I don't think this body really has any necessity to, to overturn anything that the planning zone, I think they were thoughtful on that. I, I, I think we could continue with their recommendation and just move forward because there's really no harm uh, in doing that um, according to the developer. So. Yeah. I'm available for any questions, but yeah, after discussion uh, with the developer, he, he did understand uh, what planning and zoning was concerned about, and, and he's willing to move forward as, as the recommendation out of planning and zoning. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll move to affirm the recommendation of the planning and zoning commissions. Second. second. Okay, we got a second or a motion from President Sandy, second from Ms. Lonsky, and that would just be a default Osowski. align with the, um, uh, Ms. Osowski, sorry, the, Wachensky, well, you think I'd be saying the Polish names a little more often. Um, motion would be to affirm that. So we've got a, uh, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, so that motion will carry and that, that project will, or that, that uh, ordinance will die. Okay. All right, and then 5.22 is an introduction of ordinance preliminary approval of the amendment of Grand Fork City Code, section 180301, Merrill section of sign code. Again, now we have a, a recommendation from the, the Planning and Zoning Commission not to move forward. So I think, um, you know, a lot of times, I would say 99% of the time, probably 95% of the time, we were right in, in line with them. Um, we have at times gone against what their recommendation was. We've had people that have been here and spoke on the mural. So I think it's, it's worthy of the discussion. So I'd like to open up the council this time to, to see their thoughts. And ultimately make the decision because th this will, am I correct, Mr. Brooks, that this would go back to the Planning and Zoning Commission if we agreed to approve it. If we didn't agree to approve it, it would die as it sits here and would not get a second crack. Is that correct? Yeah, right. Yes, the uh, ordinances do require preliminary and final. So as you said, uh, if you overturn, it would go up back onto Planning and Zoning Commission uh, for the June meeting. Okay, and this would give another opportunity for the, the, the proponents of this to get a chance to get in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'm not sure 
was there a large group or enough of a, a groundswell from the, the university uh, neighborhood group um, at the initial uh, meeting with the planning zone to be able to speak? Is that okay? Yeah, they did not attend. They did not attend. Okay. So I think it's you know it's a bit of an you know an interesting you know situation here because we do have a recommendation you know, coming out of planning and zoning that we have to decide uh, whether we want to affirm or whether we want to, to give this a second look, knowing that you know, we can still either go forward or not. So with that, I guess I'd open it up to the council for their. For no other reason, I'd like to move uh, approval so that uh, we can uh, so that planning and zoning has a, another chance to consider this and to hear from uh, the folks that we heard from this evening. Is that a motion or you just a comment? We've got a motion and, and we've got a second. And let's, I guess I, I still think it'd be nice to have a little bit deeper discussion on this. We'll discuss okay. it. Okay. Sure. Um, first of all, Dally is in my ward um, and I have lots of fond memories of growing up and going to West School and painting giant murals with Ben Breen. Um, I thought it was a wonderful experience. I do have an issue with what some people like to call art in this city. We have a giant piece of concrete out by the Alaris that we're paying to maintain. We have a mangled rebar sitting on top of culverts. That's also called art. I believe that's on 42nd and ghost combines. So I really have an issue with what exactly is going to be put on this mural. And what one person calls art, maybe the other person wouldn't. It's also going to cost money to maintain. Um, the university corridor people said that they found Valley to be an eyesore and isn't the school district going to rebuild that? So it should be a nicer, newer building or maybe some kind of upgrades to it. I don't agree with putting a giant mural on the outside of the school. I think that it can get out of hand quickly. Further discussion? Why don't we let, uh, I know President Sandy, I know Weber has, or have you spoken one time, try to get everyone a chance first, but I think you had a little bit of a speech before your motion, so we'll let President, President Sandy. Please, please. Thanks. Um, so I watched the Planning and Zoning Commission's meeting and listen to the discussion that they had. And I, I thought it was quite a thorough discussion and had lots of different input from all the variety of people that are on that commission that, you know, represent a nice cross section of our community. Um, there, the, the one attorney that was on, uh, that's on the commission mentioned that um, the first amendment and, and your, uh, freedom of speech, if we make, if we approve this, it becomes very difficult for us to say what can and can't be put on the side of, of whether it's Valley or in the situation that we're talking about here, we're talking about changing the sign code for the city so that murals can go on all of the school district buildings. And all of the school district buildings, with the exception of the Mark Sanford Center, are are all in residential neighborhoods. And so uh, there are reasons why, um, you know, we know art, as has been brought up, art is personal, art is very personal. Um, the Blue Heads and as uh, so Scott Wasowski's mentioned, uh, the Blue Heads and the rock sculptures and things have elicited a considerable amount of public comment. Uh, this is why, this is specifically why we have different rules for the residential zoning, 100% why. Because no matter how much or how people have good intentions, which I believe their intentions are great, I really do. Mm -hmm. Even with those good intentions, somebody's gonna be upset. Somebody's not gonna like it. We, what I know is we don't know what we don't know. And uh, in my opinion, I think the Planning and Zoning Commission came ultimately to the correct decision to deny it. I, I think also, again, if we approve the schools, I think it's only a matter of time. And, and it was specifically stated that by our planning department that 
perhaps churches and other groups around our community will also want to do murals. And how do we say that the school district can do one on that school, but this church that wants to put some religious something on theirs that, that they can't. It becomes a real sticky wicket. And in my opinion, we're just better off following the rules that our planning commission, their, their uh, mural committee came up with and the city council affirmed. That's why we went through the process, is my opinion. Thank you, President Sandy. Looks like it's gonna come down to Mr. Weigel's vote. So any yeah. further comments <laughs> to sway him in the meantime? If I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, is it all right? Yes, yes, it is. Um, so the, uh, President Sandy suggested that there had been a uh, thorough discussion of funding and zoning, but as, as we've already mentioned, the uh, University Park Neighborhood Association members were, were not part of that discussion. So um, it's also worth uh, note mentioning it's part of the staff report, but we've not mentioned it yet, that this is a request from the school district to have this uh, ordinance change. Um, uh, Ms. Lasowski, I, I would uh, suggest that um, this kind of mural um, uh, offers the promise of great continuity from Valley's past to its future. Um, and this is, uh, I'm going to tell you, some of the comments you made about some of the other public art projects around the town. Um, I think that we, we share some, some uh, feelings about those, but this is not a PAC project. Uh, this is a, a project um, that would be put together by the, the school district and the community. In fact, there is a potential to miss some uh, grant funding opportunities here. Uh, so the cost is, is not, not to the community on this one. Uh, there are policies in place to safeguard uh, against any content of a, a future mural that uh, the community uh, would find uh, offensive or problematic in any way. Um, and indeed, this is one of the um, uh, distinctive aspects uh, that help to build a, a sense of community. Uh, one of the things that I love about driving through um, both uh, large cities and rural America is getting to see the, uh, the murals uh, that are um, on, on public buildings, private buildings, uh, kind of endemic throughout the country, and, and I'm often uh, saddened when we don't have uh, as much of that here. So uh, I would certainly be in favor of, once again, having uh, giving planning and zoning one more opportunity to uh, weigh this matter, to hear from the University Park Neighborhood Association, and, and to consider uh, these various matters. So with that, uh, again, I I made a motion. Did it? Yeah. It was second. Yeah. No, we yes. Yeah. So right now we have a motion to approve it. So if it, you know, right now that would be counter to what the, the planning zoning recommendation was. So just to be clear, if you were um, voting to affirm their recommendation, there would be a no vote on, on this. So, so it, your, your stances so far would be a no vote. Just so you're okay. clear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, I'll, I'll just add one thing. I, I'm against the murals on our schools, churches, you name it. Um, but I would like. The folks to have at least an opportunity to go to the planning and zoning. So I will do that, um, knowing in the future that I'll vote against it and side with our planning and zoning, but at least you guys have the opportunity to go in front of the planning and zoning and, and speak to them about it. All right, any further discussion? Well, just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, my kids were our alumni of, of Valley Middle School, and I think Valley has a really rough reputation. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, and I would love to give those kids the memory Becky had of the pride when they would see that mural in the future. Um, I, I think art is great. I don't think this art will go through a process or that it'll go through a process that they're not just going to throw up whatever they decide. It'll, it has to be improved. It has to be maintained. Um, I think it would, I know it's your award, but I think it would give pride to the community into those kids. I, I would just add one thing. I, I'm also a graduate of Valley. Um, I've never lived on the south end of Grand Forks. I've only li ever lived on the north end. And for me, what I took away from Valley Middle School was uh, Ms. Pullum, who was just named Teacher of the Year for the Grand Forks Public Schools, and, and Mr. Vonish and uh, Mr. Carlson, all the great teachers and coaches and everybody that I had. Um, for me personally, I, I wouldn't have taken a mural I took away the relationships that I had with all those folks. And so um, 
I think that's what has the biggest impact on our kids is those relationships that they have with some of the great teachers that we do have in the, in the community. I think we can all agree with that. I think we were going to talk about, I mean, the community is going to talk about rooms, buildings, a lot of different things, but we've got some phenomenal teachers that do a lot of work with little budgets. And that's who we all can have fond memories of, of growing up. But uh, sorry, I got nostalgic there, but go ahead. <laughs> some question. So Mr. Weber, I'm, I'm all for getting public input, but I, I guess in, as a practical matter, we're talking about and being asked to change city code, which is policy, right? We're talking policy, right? Yet you want to push this back to planning and zoning so that they can have a, a fun, family friendly conversation about why murals are great. That's not policy. That's not how we make policy. We make policy by setting rules and following the rules because the rules are there for a reason. I have no problem. If, as a matter of fact, if they all want to get up, stand up, and talk to us today about how great the murals are, I'm sure the mural will be great. 100% agree. That's not that's not the point. We, the Planning and Zoning Commission, has the rules and are following the rules as the rules are for a reason. That's why we have the rules. I think that you uh, were among the votes to change the ordinance that allowed. Um, Murals to be painted downtown. A hundred percent. I have no problem with murals downtown. Put them all over the place. But, but the point is, you were asking. This is policy, mm -hmm. and and then kind of suggesting that policy is carved in stone. When we both know that policy, especially when the community uh, requests it, again, can, I, can I be revised. agree with that. Right. I just think that residential neighborhoods are different than downtown. I believe it's residential, and uh, I think uh, I, it's just my opinion. What? Let's move on. We've had whatever. We've had a good discussion. I guess any final thoughts on those? We'll move to the board. All right. So we got a motion and a second on the floor again to be clear. Um, a, a motion here to approve this. A motion was made. The second was made. It's going to take a, a majority vote to, to move this. It'll go back to the, the planning and zoning commission. Where um, and then if they, I guess whether they approve it or deny it, it would come back to us for a second chance. So I uh, want to do a roll call vote. I think we're pretty clear we're likely to land, but. Please, Mr. Orsted. Um, Weigel. Yes. Zalski, no. Weber. Yes. Blensky. Yes. Howard. No. <laughs> okay, we've got a three to two. That motion passes a three to two vote. All right. The staff report did say that was going to go to May's. It'll go to June's because we do have to do a public hearing and it's too late to get that in the hair. So. Okay, so if you want that group know, it'll be at the June planning and zoning. Uh, when do you have a date for that? Uh, be the first Wednesday of June, and then the third Wednesday, or third Monday of June for city council. So we'll get you those dates. Thanks. All right, that's it for action. Let's move on to six information items. 6.1, statement of changes in cash balance as of 12.31 and 1.31. Thank you. And 6.2, investment portfolio summary as of March 31st. Right, thank you. We'll move on to seven approval of minutes and bills. And Moved. vendor list 7.1. We reviewed the bill. We got a motion to approve the bill. We got a motion from Mr. Uh, Vice President Weber, second from Ms. Osowski. For the discussion on the vendor list, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. And 7.2 minutes from December 19th and January 3rd. Once again, thank you to the finance team for doing double the minutes in one week and it's catching up i see that day creeping up so we're into 2023 now so thank you for that as is yeah. motion to approve from president sandy and we're a second from uh, lots of people but looks like miss osowski is quickest on the draw uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed same sign motion carries unanimously um Mr. Fields, any comments this evening? I have two, Mayor. Um, I, I attended the North Dakota State Water Commission meeting. We had two um, projects on there. One was the South and Interior Flood Protection Master Plan that you've approved. Um, they, uh, on um, behalf of the governor, uh, they approved a 60% cost share for that project. And so that was uh, in the amount of $296,670. We also had the water line expansion phase one in the Highway 81 area. They did approve that one at 60%. So that was a, a grant request of one, $1, 1165000 So it's almost uh, $1.5 million. And um, most importantly, Governor uh, Bergram um, 
had some positive remarks. Sometimes it's hard to, to imagine that you would have positive remarks about the city of Grand Forks, but he wanted me to send all his great wishes about all the great things that are going on in the city of Grand Forks, and he's really appreciate all, all that is happening in Grand Forks. So he made a special note of that um, after the presentation. So you should uh, you should know that, that he's watching and is really um, positively encouraged all the great things going on in Grand Forks. Number two, the Epitome Energy um, Development Agreement. We're working on that. I would anticipate that would be back um, with you for further discussion in May. And so we are making progress on that and do various ways to serve that project. And um, I would say we're going to be leaning on the state of North Dakota in a, in a similar way from transportation to water to wastewater to wastewater reuse on that particular project. And as Mr. Burke, um, as our meeting went today, is that uh, that they've had a full uh, due diligence effort on that particular project. And uh, it's been given a green light from a national security perspective. So that's good to hear. Uh, as we move forward. So um, we're going to continue to work hard on that particular project too. So those, those should be, that project should come through and there'll be a plenty of discussion coming through May and, and June. And, and obviously uh, we'll have to talk to you about the development agreement, but one of the first things that will move through is planning and zoning. Also. So thank you, Mayor. All right, so uh, move on to nine. Mayor and council member comments. Mr. Weigel, any comments this evening? I would just say again, congratulations to Mrs. Poland. Now I believe it's South, but was at Valley. Great teacher and well deserving of that award. Thank you, Mr. Michael. Ms. Osowski, any comments? I have a couple comments. One about the Herald lease. I do think that we as a city should be better landlords. I guess I'm not sure about the comments that he made or if they're true or not. I I don't know. But I do think that we should be good to our tenants. Um, also, can you please give me a small update, Mr. Gosted, on where we're at with the standstill agreement? Um, just have we made any kind of progress? I'm just finalizing. If I start, I'll start the first part with the Herald lease. I mean, we did, the city did buy the building from the Herald. There, you know, there has, obviously there were some issues with the building in the past. I do think a better job needs to be done to maintain it. I also do think that there are some tenants that are lined up. So I think if we do have tenants that are willing to commit, then maybe it's a, a chance to take another look at it. Um, there's obviously going to need to be some work done to, to make sure that the parking and other things that are in that lease are being followed. And uh, so I think if everyone's okay, you know, if we do have tenants that are saying, hey, we'll get in there right away, it's not going to be many months and at a higher rate that we would bring it back. And that is fiscally, makes a lot of sense fiscally to move forward, especially if they're out of their lease. We're going to be in the same spot in May. There are other lease in May. There's going to be one or two months at that point. If that can be moved forward and we're getting a higher rate, um, I think it's worth it. But let's make sure we've got some tenants that are saying right. we're going to go and that's going to fill up enough of that space. So it's just a net positive for us. And I think it's an easier decision to make. Everybody's okay with that, right. Mr. Gustin. All right. Yep. Yeah. We had, as you know, we reported last time we had a meeting. Uh, the mayor, uh, Mr. Freeland, and I met with uh, Fu Fang's attorney and uh, the representatives, uh, Mr. Shuteresh. Uh, from there, um, they came back with a proposal um, for us to consider. Um, we're now working on um, uh, coming back with another proposal to to uh, at this point. Can I see the proposal? Uh, certainly. Uh, the The issue is is that the uh, the discussions are settlement discussions, which cannot be disclosed um, under under the rule that the parties have been operating under. Um, so it doesn't become public information. Right. So, but I could come to your office absolutely. and see it. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Um, so that's kind of uh, where we're at. And the one thing that I heard today with Mr. Burke was uh, he said that the standstill agreement was made perfect sense from their perspective. Okay. So, how much longer do you think will be? That kind of going know. back and forth. That I don't know. I mean, it. it, it I, I can't say with uh, okay. absolute certainty, other than. Um, the standstill agreement has a provision that um, obviously ends, I think, on, I think it was June 13th or something. It's 90 like days, that. Yeah, I you know, think, right? We calculated it on June 13th okay. as we put a date certain so that I don't have to do the math. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's also a provision that if we would happen to get the uh, uh, non-renewal notice on the uh, letter of credit, that would, end the, that would end the discussions as well. 
Um, and that would have to be uh, the way that it sets up right now is that non-renewables would have to be received uh, by April 24th in order to be effective. And it wouldn't be effective until uh, the June 24th date. So the letter of credit is in place until June 24th of this year. Yep. I'm finished. Thank you. All right. Uh, we got, uh, got uh, Ms. Lonsky. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the most messages I'm receiving right now are about potholes. So I was just wondering if we had an update on, on what to tell people. Right now, it's uh, it, right now, Ms. Lenske, it's um, we do have, you know, asphalt streets are the worst right now, 30 seconds the worst. It's going to get milled and overlay. It's going to be a DOT project. So that's probably the one we, we hear a lot about. Right now, we, um, we bought. Um, Puddle patch, but with uh, not our machine, but we have to do some cold patch right now because of the ground thaws not out. So, generally, probably in mid May, we're going to be out there with our regular uh, asphalt crews to do that. Um, the city council, you guys have approved, uh, you know, concrete replacements, asphalt replacements. Our, our public works crews are going to be out there puddle patching first with this temporary, and then we're going to be back to the asphalt. People are going to see a, a mill and mill related 30 second. Uh, Avenue uh, this year, and you've approved you've approved a lot of projects uh, throughout the city. Um, you know, mainly thanks to the sales tax that was approved, and you know, about sixty percent of that um, five million dollars, I think five six million dollars, is going towards all that these kinds of projects. So we've made a lot of progress, but it, it's it has been a tough winter. But um, we know all the problem spots, and our public works crews work hard. Um, involved in a lot of different things, and um, we're all thankful for all the great work. And they are out there um, doing work. And Miss Lipsch is here too; she can speak for herself in her yeah. own department too to would follow you, up with. Would the you department. mind, yeah, just giving us? I know we had a long conversation about this, and I think when people get, you know, understand what takes right now and what doesn't take when, you, when you're talking about filling potholes and what happens if you fill them now and how quickly they be, become an issue again. You would, yeah, go up to the mic and just give kind of a high level of what you gave me on Tuesday morning um, from last week. You had enough time to walk around to think about it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Wyszynski and council members, um, we have been out patching. One of the big problems that we're facing is supply of our tack oil. So when you have a pot oil, you put tack oil and then you fill it with the mix. And right now that is simply not available. It's been on order for four to six weeks. We're hoping to have it this week or early next week. We have been out patching. Um, the problem is, is that with the freeze thaw cycle that's happening currently, those are popping right back out. And so until we can get warm temperatures, get the compaction right, get the tack oil, that's when we're gonna start seeing these permanent fixes. Um, we are exploring some other options. Um, the other problem is we've been out patching, but our machine did go down. And so it was down um, most of last week. We did get it going on Friday. And so we were out patching 30 seconds after today. So we are working hard to get all the materials we need. And um, unfortunately, it's going to take temperatures to work with us. Thank you for that. Keep up the work. I think if it takes some overtime, we're more than willing to approve that to get that done. So. That's in mind. All right. Let's get any other comments. All right. I don't think we've got Michael uh, Lean or uh, Kavami, so we'll go to Vice President uh, Weber. Um, it's my understanding from the, the conversation that I uh, was in on with Mr. Burke that not only has Epitome received uh, an absolute green light uh, from his, his office's perspective, but actually, uh, and as Mr. Gustad has mentioned, the standstill agreement we also thought was uh, absolutely the right thing for us to do and to uh, continue to engage negotiations. And uh, Cirrus was also given an absolute agreement. And the, with the, so, to include their expansion. And including their expansion. Right. right. So uh, there were some suggestions earlier tonight that somehow uh, those companies were um, uh, akin to food fund, but um, it was worth noting that uh, these three received a, a green light from Mr. Burke. So, thanks. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Weber. President Sandy. Yeah, I think we did enough damage tonight. No, <laughs> I knew it. You should never have to go through that. Your they, kids, they, anybody's they, kids, should never be a, a part of a public. They followed today. my wife out to intimidate her. They followed her out. 
It's horrible. It is horrible. And for our guests to call them, um, yeah, I'm sorry to bring it up, but yeah, so it, it was horrible to watch and, and to have that person declared as some hero, right? Is offensive. Yeah. Well, I was going to touch on this a little bit softer in my comments. I do think this is a good outlet for people to come and express displeasure. I think that is totally fine. I think it's totally fine to have disagreements between council members or disagreements between citizens in the council. I think that is all fine. When you get to the point where you are attacking people personally, uh, when you're bringing their children into it, a line has crossed that is so far beyond anything in common society that should be happening that it's really reprehensible. And I hope that we can get to a point where we, in our society, it's getting worse and worse. We can be an example of how bad it gets, or we can be an example of doing things the right way. I think we can disagree in the right way. And what we saw tonight was not acceptable. Um, and when you allow a platform like this, those things can happen. I'm perfectly fine if someone wants to come up and call me um, a name that is a pejorative of a female anatomy. That, that word was mentioned quite a bit tonight. Uh, but when you bring in somebody's kids in, that is just ridiculous. And I hope that Mr. Cadillac will take that to heart. And I hope everyone can take that to heart and we can just move forward. Uh, with that, I'm not, we're going to move on. I'm going to look for a motion to adjourn. So a motion in a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 From this side of the table, I was not aware of.